If you are thinking of a bank that takes care of customers' needs by providing quality services with flexibility, reliability, and innovation, think Trust Bank Limited. With Trust Bank Limited Mobile Banking, you enjoy services such as balance inquiry, mini statement, funds transfer between accounts, exchange rates, mobile airtime top up, stop ATM card, checkbook request, and pin change. Our real-time gross settlement allows the customer to instruct the bank to transfer funds from their account to another account at another bank. Our expertise and experience in international banking is both legendary and the envy of the market. Retail banking, one bank, different amazing packages. Whether you are interested in savings account, current account, time or fixed deposit account, lending or overdraft, our team of dedicated staff is always ready and willing to help you out with your transactions as you wish. Corporate Banking Trust Bank Limited offers the most convenient services for deposit accounts, credit facilities, trade finance, bond and guarantee and foreign currency account. With e-banking, you can make electronic bill payments and online banking and enjoy 24-hour access to your cash with our ATM. With the largest network of branches and agents, we give you the convenience to receive funds as you please. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Fais l'impôt waru gala si kepo ko hamne do mi reo minga ak nyufi deke. Bo fe kene chi at mi sa kom kom we su na nyar fuka ak nyenti junei dalasi. Mbete wer bu neka dinga am luto lu si nyari junei dalasi. Lempo silangurgi di sukande ku ngi lige yoku te reo mi. GRA moi bang has bunguri gambia sas ngi mu feye ku lepo lui lempo chi bi reo mi. Betak na GRA di yegal fey kati lempo ine waru gala pur nyu fey lu nyu nan withholding tax on contract payment. Ma nam bepa contract bu way joxe te ci bi rew mi lañu to kon xaliss contract bi ngeen nangoto war nga ci wañi ci xayma témer bu nekk fuka bu féké né contract bi dekku ci bi rew mi bu boba di nga waro wañi témer bu nekk fuka ak jurom li moy lempo bu ñu nan withholding tax on contract payment li moy lempo bi nga xamné yow mi joxe contract waru gal la nga wol batté ku dem fey ko ci makane GRA tax office bu la gëna jégué mbété ci banque yi GRA jagléel pour fey lempo war nga djebal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak djurom ganaw bi nga wagné ci xali ci contract bi amul ben contracto bu ñu téggel fey lempo bi xana mu fekk né nguri gambia ñoko djégalé bolé ci project yi nga xamné mbotay ndimbali ñokoy dépense gra di fey ku lempo ngir yok for the first time in the history of the gambia gambia printing publishing corporation proudly introduces the billiomatic exercise book printing machine the machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours.
In communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsol's internet broadband. And it's stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. With an expansion in travel services, customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs, provided by professional, experienced and ever-smiling staff. GIA's Hajj package and services by... Hello and welcome to another edition of Yushko Kirpatu. And just like we do every Thursday, we come here to talk about issues uh, that are happening uh, in the country, especially uh, politically related programs. And we want to first say Eid Mubarak to you all. Dindu uh, Yunyip, Chi Weri Korvi, Dilen Waha Nakasin Juli, by Juli Ngensi Jama. Uh, today, of course, I will be joined by Oli, who is always late. She's late today also. And Esa, who is always late. She'll be late. So, but they'll be joining us uh, because the guests are here already. Uh, but me, with me, I have Kemu Bojan. Kemu is the Secretary General of the United uh, mm. Youth, uh, Secretary General of the United Democratic Party. Kemu, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Fatu, and I'm saying a big uh, welcome to all viewers watching us. In and our of home. course, our Duru Ja. Duru, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me once again. Happy to be back and greetings to everybody watching. So, Duru, today we're going to talk about issues um, that happened during this week. Uh, last week, of course, and this week. Uh, last week, um, it was the, um, the, the president's remarks at the, the state, uh, at the what, Eid remarks, when the Muslim elders went to visit. Also, we were talking about the cabinet appointments. Anyone. <laughs> Anyone, huh? we were to, but we will be talking about these um, two issues. Let's start with the, the remarks by His Excellency the President. Um, naturally, uh, when um, Eid comes, the Muslim elders go to state house to visit the president, and this is a time that um, the elders of the community will talk to the president about issues that they think the, the government should address, and of course also have a frank conversation about what is happening in the country. And also it's an opportunity for the president to also uh, task the leaders about their role and what society, how they should mold the society. In fact, in his remark, the president himself said um, during surveys, it was uh, recognized that the religious leaders are the most trusted people in this country, so they should be helping in shaping how this society functions. So, um, in the day, the president, um, the uh, gypsy uh, made some remarks about uh, one of the biggest activists in this country, Madi Jobate, uh, somebody that I say personally I have so much respect for. Um, you might not agree with Madi on all the things that he says, but he's been very consistent on his deliberations. When you hear the president say some of those remarks, what, what was your first reaction to that? Well, thank you once again. Can we have the AC off because I think the sound is, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. English or well, uh, English, yeah. Uh, well, English, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. First of all, I would want to say a little bit about Madi. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, uh, I might not agree with everything he says, but me personally, Madi has certain liking for me. Anywhere we meet, we discuss, he sends me emails. So I have no issues with him, to be quite honest. I want to point that out. Um, then being a leader, it's very difficult. Yeah. Because you having a group, a community, a party, an institution, mm -hmm. there are people that definitely look up to you. Mm -hmm. Now, being a president yeah. is a bigger responsibility. Because even the leaders put together, mm -hmm. you become their leader. Mm -hmm. the, at the peak of this country, mm -hmm. Gambians as a whole, you are the president. That's a bigger responsibility. Mm -hmm. I did not know President Adam Abaro for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I came to know him 
before the alliance mm -hmm. and after the alliance. I've had the opportunity to sit with him, discuss a lot of issues, even during the tour. Um, likewise, a lot with this course. Mm -hmm. But his personality, he's not the type yeah. who's very, uh, I could say, aggressive or who has that desire to harm or Anyone. to cause any injury to anybody. It's no. not his nature. Mm -hmm. uh, I am assuming there are people whistling to him, Madi this, Madi that. Maybe sometimes complaints come a lot, you feel I need to do something. Yeah. Because I know of people who attack him, who insult him, they criticize, wow. they do a lot, and he to never mentions them. He never mentioned anything. So I believe there's something specific, not known to many of us about Martin, yeah. that has been said, or he's been pushed to do so, that led to that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I believe as a leader, you don't respond to anything that comes your way or is said about you or the way you run your government. Mm -hmm. Because everybody will not like you, and whether you like it or not, people will keep talking. Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever led to that, I believe he will learn from it, and I don't think he will um, continue any further to be engaging in any other personalities of that. Because mm -hmm. people feel better. As a president, you are powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, for the constitution of our country, you have powers. You can dictate, you can direct people, you can give orders. So when you address people, you point at the mention there, and you definitely they will feel terrified. They will feel like it's an attack on them. Because to the extent some are saying, uh, even in Madi's write-up, that he could be attacked, his compound could be this and that. But I don't think as Gambians we have people of that nature, just for certain statements or write-up, they will want to attack them. So in other countries, it's happening from here. Uh, I think the brotherhood we have, people will care not to that. Yeah. Uh, Dudu, I think, you know, I've always said that Dudu is my favorite uh, APRC politician. <laughs> Mom. The flower, lim gum, lim gis. And I think it's important to be honest when we do our deliberations. Uh, these things are very important because you will be judged for some of these things you, you say. Um, but Kemo, like, what is your reaction to um, the president's um, speech, especially his, his, his speech? Yes, I think um, for me I'd like to start from uh, um, the beginning of where most of these things happened. Um, I think before the president came out and spoke about Mahdi, mm -hmm. Um, we were privy to Ibrahim Asilad attacking Mahdi, who was the Minister of Information. Uh, we are also privy to Sankare, who is the spokesperson of the government, also attacking Mahdi. So I think it was something Can that... We, Charles, everybody is telling me that the sound is bad. Can you check the sound, please? Everyone is saying the sound is bad, right? Okay, go ahead. Yes, um, so for us, that is something that really sets a tone for, for an onslaught on Mahdi's personality. If a government and especially high-ranking government officials are very thin-skinned that the, um, the opinions of an activist is going to get to them that they would openly um, attack his personality. That is a problem for the Gambia. And going up to the point that the president himself, himself has to point out to a certain individual and say that the individual is planning on burning down the country, that, is, that was very illogical and that was very un unnecessary on, on the part of the president. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I would like to digress from what my brother has said, that maybe people are coming up and telling the president things. I do believe that the president hears and knows everything that's happening in this country. Yeah. And he is privy to all information that we are privy to. And unfortunately, he hasn't been able to manage it well. And being a good leader comes up with being a good manager. How do you manage the information that you are seeping in? How do you make sure that you are able to know what is sensitive and what's not? Mm -hmm. But to, to stand on each day, and as the chief protector of our country mm -hmm. and threaten the life of, a, of an individual is definitely something that I didn't expect from him. And to say that, I, I do believe that Mahdi was genuine in saying that um, he, he feels threatened. Because if the chief citizen of the country points at you and criticizes you for the things that you have said, it is opening a can of worms for people to also start an onslaught on you. And we have seen with members of someone like Kao Yoro, for example, we have seen where messages are going around that he's saying that they, they are going to kill Mali. And these are things that we are very afraid of as a country. I think we need to be very careful of. And if people are given the position of responsibility, they need to be responsible and be able to say things that wouldn't cause harm and damage to people. And it is important that there, there is criticism. It is important that there, there, there's an active civil service in every democratization process. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have a vibrant civil society. We wouldn't be here if people are not able to say what they want to say and be and feel at ease for um, um, about it. 
So if we're having the president come back and say that, you know, so, so and so individual is saying so and so, and the person is trying to lit up the country, I think that is something that we really have to sit and have a national conversation about. It is not something we have to brush under the carpet, but it's something we have to deal with and face. Because it, it might start with Mali today, tomorrow nobody knows who is going to be on the menu. And we cannot sit and wait for what happened to happen again. We need to be able to tackle it and make sure that, you know, um, um, we, we are able to address it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Oli, what's your reaction to the President's Eid message? I equally believe that um, the platform that the president used to address the situation or the issue with Mari Jabati, I don't think it was the right platform. And um, also, I have actually took my time to listen to what the president said. And I tried to go back to what Mari has been saying to try to see how is Mari trying to, you know, just create chaos or situations in the country. So basically, it's it's more like um, somehow you, as the president of the country, I think um, he, he can say that we would not tolerate or we would not accept anybody trying to create any problem in the country as the chief of staff of the, you know, like the number one citizen of the country. But at the same time, for me, it was more about the platform that was used and the day it was Eid and then you had the Muslim, you know, elders coming to talk to you about Eid, about peace, about, and then we've just, co we're just coming from an elections in December. We're coming from National Assembly elections as well. And I think um, people are still, people need to be united. Mm -hmm. So I think a day like that would have been a good opportunity for the president to say, actually when you unite say the platform. Us. Um, that means it can be said in another platform? It depends on, um, not necessarily, it can be, I don't, I don't agree to singling out somebody, but at the same time, I don't agree to anybody trying to create situations and tensions in the country. So it depends on the message. But the, did you and see, okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah go ahead. so it depends on the message. So for me, for the president to address a, a particular situation, he can do that. But then the platform has to be right, the message has to be right, the audience has to be right. So basically, that's how you communicate, because you cannot have the Muslim elders to discuss about Mahdi, for example. If the president feels that Mahdi is threatening the country or just trying to create a situation, I think he could have addressed that with the CSOs. He could have addressed that with a, from, with a different audience on a different platform. That is, if he feels that Mahdi is trying to create or trying to put the country up in flames. So for me, the issue I have is more to do with um, the platform that was used and the audience he had because for me communication is about who is listening to you so if you think Mahdi is definitely doing that address Mahdi in a platform that is relevant to that get the C CSOs get to Mahdi or get to whoever deals with CSOs and say look Mahdi is an activist and we feel that Mahdi is trying to create this this and that and that would be addressed but you have Muslim elders I think that platform should have been about all of us coming together should have been a message about peace should have been a message about unity than singling out or mentioning Mahdi yeah. and yeah you want to go yes in? I want to say a few things mm -hmm. uh, it clicked my mind mm -hmm. I would say or oh, I suspect mm -hmm. the power of media played a part yeah because before he said that I just clicked about when Samsar came here with Mahdi, when they had their program, yes. uh, the video went viral. Yes. That part was edited, the way Mahdi sounded, how Samsar responded. Mm -hmm. Myself, when I saw that video, that, that, that video, I was not happy. Mm -hmm. In one of the WhatsApp forums, I made some comments. I said, elderly people, role models for that matter, the young people look up to them. Yeah. The way they are behaving on social media, mm -hmm. for me, it is unacceptable. These issues, you could settle it offline. Yeah. So I feel the way they behave wasn't well at all. Mm -hmm. When I saw that video, I definitely wasn't happy. Yeah. I believe you being a human rights activist, um, if you advocate for other people's rights, I believe for me, everybody should be respected. I have every right to come to Kefatu, talk about my nonsense. Yeah. Out of my nonsense, some people will pick some sense out of it. Yeah. But you cannot say no. Dudu cannot be on this platform because A, B, and C, what he did yesterday, the wrongs I did yesterday, does it mean today I cannot say anything right? I think we need to overlook that and yeah. stop getting emotional at times. Again, my brother came on made mention of Kauyaro. Mm -hmm. 
Number one, he's not in the country. Even me, yeah. he attacked me, accusing no. me of I think trying I'm, to create chaos I'm, and phony. I'm actually, I am his you know, biggest. Saying, yeah. saying I am his issues. biggest. <laughs> After all, who is Kawyer? I don't know him. Okay. And okay. where was Kawyer? Yes. He's among those who were part of the instigation of three years. Jordan, even the pioneers, I would yeah. say. So if you want to come today and want to show everybody you love Barrow and PP more than everybody else, for me, it's a joke. Yeah. And let him keep his breaking news he's beating on the <laughs> social media. Yeah. This one is, he said it that Jahum Pashisa will be vice president, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Langton Bongtamba will be CDS. And they'll tell you from my sources, well, <laughs> if your sources are fooling you, yeah. stop using those sources. Mm -hmm. What news can they break? You have how many media houses in this country? They don't have that information. Yeah. But you sitting outside the Gambia, you got that info. From who? Yeah. You know, I don't listen to such breaking news. Yeah. Yeah. How could Kayoro say that they're going to kill man? And I think, but yeah, I think yeah, but, the thing, um, yeah. Yeah, can I come in there? Yeah. I think, regardless of the personality of the individual that yeah. said it, mm -hmm. I think the source of contention or the point we are trying to put across is that that utterance came after the president had said these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is what <clears throat> I am trying to put across. Yeah. Regardless if it's a madman out there or if it's whoever. Yeah. But because they found the courage to say it because the head of state had said it or had given them the leeway to say it. And I'd also want to disagree with Oli. Regardless of the platform, regardless of the audience, we do not expect the president to go after people for, for practicing free speech. Of course. And secondly, these are things that Madi said because Madi has a platform. But every other Gambian has been saying the same thing. Yeah. That there's rampant corruption, that ministers, um, the land allocation of ministers is, is not something that we are agreeing with because majority of Gambians can't even own land. He was speaking on basis of, of things that were happening in the country. So... I don't believe that the president should be the one to, to respond. I believe that there's dignity in the office that he upholds. I believe that there's dignity in the position that he upholds. He cannot be the individual to taste and with people. Mahdi is an activist. Mahdi is there to hold the government accountable. He is there to listen to Mahdi and try to correct from the things that Mahdi is saying. And it's not just about Mahdi. It's about every activist in this country that fought for change to, so that they will be able to speak and be able to represent the aspirations and views of the constituents that they represent. And if the president, who we voted in, so that he would guard these rights and freedoms, is the one who is now not happy with us expressing ourselves, then it's a cause of concern. And this is our position, and this is what we are saying. And I think it's important um, what um, leaders say uh, are very important. Because I do remember, sometimes you wouldn't know until you, 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 you are a victim yourself this particular individual that I don't even want to give relevance that you guys are mentioning <laughs> on my show. <laughs> I wish nobody mentioned him. Uh, he's but too much. I have been be his biggest um, victim <clears throat> of attacks, caricaturing and making fun of me, and I don't give him relevance. But again, there are other people also, because I do remember during the campaign when things were really tough, there was this particular individual who, um, who was managing a particular party um, media and this guy publicly said that Kirfatu, anytime they see Kirfatu members on any of their programs they will attack us and That's he serious. said this and this person is very vocal and this and people were like worried and say you should go to police i'm not going to any police station <laughs> but i think sometimes it's what they hear yeah. from leaders being the president being political leaders everybody should be measured in their in their deliberation especially in the time that we are in we are very much polarized and the president i said um after the national assembly elections his speech after the was the best ever statement the president ever made when he talked about coming together as a country moving forward after what happened to become a one nation and build this country so i think statements like this is so unfortunate that um it came from him, but I think these are things that naturally I don't think President Barrow is like that. But again, President Barrow has a lot of advisors. I'm expecting that before he speaks, people will advise him as to what to say, what are the topics, and you know, some of these things. But you have Fatu Ture there. You have Ule there. Those kind of stuff. You I know. Don't yeah, and I think those things, you know, normally President Barrow, mm. I mean, you know, people can get out of their elements, but normally he's not that kind of person. Yes. So what, that was why it was surprising. Yes, that's what I mentioned. I said, knowing him, I haven't known him for long. He's not yeah. the type who could even kill a fly, yeah. to be quite honest. And I think what Madi said, it's not about the critic. I am 
yeah. picking out of what he said. Mandi has been criticizing and Baron for the longest time. <laughs> I think it's about when he said that for people to come out in the streets and, and protest. Yeah. That's one point that most leaders don't want to see yeah. people out in the street. Then, it could throw the violence. Yeah, but that but is a constitutional is, right. That is a constitutionally right. guaranteed right. Yeah. That is right but, now in but, the U.S. Mm. Let me just bring this live example. Mm. In the U.S., somebody leaked uh, a, a court uh, document that they are going to ban abortion that has been legal for over 40 years. And because of that, for the past five days, every city in the United States are protesting. Mm. They are protesting yeah. at the Supreme Court. They are writing letters, but that doesn't mean they are burning the country down. So Comparison. I think protests are, I mean, I know we coming from where we come from. Compared to where we come from, we are not get angry. I know. Yeah. They'll yeah. start burning tires, I throwing don't stones. Want protests, but I think no. as, a, as, a dem as a developing democracy, we should also understand that we are growing. Yeah. We are going to be protesting. We will be going out. I think the messaging yeah. should be when we go out, let's do it in a civilized exactly. way and have a moderate messaging and don't burn down anything. Yes. That's, where I, to to to. That's where I exactly. wanted to arrive to. That's why I wanted to arrive to. That if you tell people let's go come out. out or let's go out, mm -hmm. it should be well defined exactly. to send that message clearly, the reason of going out and how it should be done. And people need to understand in a country like ours, people just don't go out like that. Mm -hmm. You must apply for a permit. You know, based on where you want to do it and the size of the crowd oh, no, and the light. And I'm trying to get and I'm trying to Yes, but, <laughs> but let me. Using a but then, um, obstruction let me, for traffic. No, so I, for example, yeah, if okay. you tell people come out, then they come in large numbers and obstruct yeah. traffic, they are going against the law. Yes. Can because I, they don't have any right to obstruct traffic. And then and I'll tell you one thing. We need to realize that we still have the 1997 constitution going on. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things that um, example. people should be very, very just careful uh -huh. in terms of demonstration. In, because the laws that we had, the bad ones that we had, that there. they are still here. Mm -hmm. So so for me, as I said, I don't, I don't really, and, I, and I've made this very clear, I was not happy. And honestly speaking, but then again, as Dudu has said, if Madi is saying, let's go come out and demonstrate, Definitely. I think anybody in that position would be, we have seen few demonstrations we had since we had our democracy. And ugly. we've seen how most of them have turned out. So everybody would be emotional, everybody would be defensive. So for me, I think if Madi is going overboard, Madi needs to be addressed where he should be addressed. Is he going I agree. overboard? No, I said Papa, if Madi is going overboard, <laughs> he should be. Because for me, if that's my opinion to think he went overboard yeah. or not. No. But I don't know how the president assess what Madi said for him yeah. to come up with that. Yeah, so yeah. for me, um, I don't want to take any positions. But for me, I'm just being very, very... Um, calculated. Huh? Yeah, not, not necessarily <laughs> calculated. But what yeah. I'm trying to say is my opinion here does not really matter. Because it's about the president, how he assess what Madi said. Yeah. So for him, if he felt that Madi was being a threat, if he felt that Madi was trying to create a problem, for me, I think where he addressed that was wrong. Address that at the right channel and follow. And right yes, way. for me, that it's not about yeah. Madi or the president or yeah. he's, he's right or he's wrong. Especially yeah. so so the Yeah, so for but me, well, that's where then, it should then, be. I just I want to agree with Oli yeah. saying Madi went overboard. His okay. confrontation with Samsa, Sam. for me, he went overboard. Okay. Because you cannot dictate to somebody said you have no right to come here and talk. I don't yeah. think any activist has that. And then, and then for me, for me, I've said this even watching the show because I don't know who comes on other people's show. But I know they're who comes on my invited. show, right? I don't know who comes on the brunch or politics. Kacha, I see, but I see it when they are on live or when they put the flyers up. Somebody like me, I normally don't ask how many times you invite me. Do I ask you who and who will who be is there? Coming? No. A Gambian, like, a Gambian. I mean, they are all brothers and sisters. And I do believe no when I when I saw that conference, I was like, Ew. you know. And I saw, I'm like, okay, Madi came after us too. But again, and some one people thing, thought that was a setup. For me, I know it wasn't no, because I've been coming here I mean, several times. Like today, you didn't even know that Kemo was coming. Exactly, you I came here and then I saw even it. Only did and I have no problem. Said, right? Sitting with Kemo, I could disagree, yeah. agree with him, but I think, we could shout here, yeah. but I will never disrespect but I him think or use any threatening word or foul language. And, then, and I always said this, even on Kirfatu, when we uh, reproduce stories, I remember when Sam made a um, uh, commentary about defending the Minister of Lands about the distribution. Mm. I personally took that from his page and I gave it to the reporters to say, oh, can you do work on this commentary? Mm. Because I feel that at that point, 
they were all the commentary that we were reproducing Main were important. against the government or the ministry. Mm. Somebody out there also is defending this minister. I wanted to give them the platform to say why they're defending them. So when you do that, most of the time we get the negative ones coming and we reproduce. And people say, yo, mom, negative, when are they prove <laughs> But that's what we get. So when we did the Samsar commentary, people started coming. Get fatu. We are so disappointed in you. <laughs> Why are you giving platform? For example, on Rebo Sidi Njai, when we published everybody's photo uh, on Tobaski Day, whenever I put Sidi Njai's pictures, people come after me personally. But at the end of the day, I say to them, look, I don't judge anybody. People have their record, and they will that record will follow them for the rest of their life. Yes, when they sit on my platform, I will question them on those things. I'll go after them on their records. But at the end of the day, when Ken Fatu brings guests, we don't, we don't segregate. Mm -hmm. We make sure we give platform to everybody. That is professionalism. Even, even, even people that we disagree with, we bring them on this platform. Yes. Me and Oli never agree on anything political. <laughs> Most of the things we don't agree I was, on. I was Can invited I? on for the people by the people. Yeah. Before the show started, they, they told me, you know we don't like Yagamet yeah. and we don't like APRC. But for you, we can bring we you on board and we discuss. We discuss. You know, people yeah. are so being honest. Be the same all That's the, time. the thing. Only we and... always don't agree, but we always have our opinions known. Yes. So I think it's important. And we I, can I, learn from to each other. To be honest, other. I also felt like, um, even the, uh, what Madi said, I, I, I felt like, ooh, that was a little hard. <laughs> but I, I still was. think um, that, you know, that doesn't warrant for the president to make those remarks. Uh, uh, yes, I'm, I, I, cried, I, yeah. I just want to go back to the term overboard. Yeah. And I believe that it's a constitutional right mm -hmm. for every Gambian yeah. to have a peaceful procession. Mm -hmm. And his, history tells us, or Gambian political history tells us, that all processions in this country have been peaceful mm -hmm. until the state used excess power on the, on the protesters. Yeah. Even within this, from 2016 to date, it has been peaceful until the, the state used the police to, to effect force on the people. Not all. Majority. I remember the double guy who was killed. I was on the ground, and what I saw that day. Which double guy? Uh, the one who was killed at the Serekunda market by the. I was. No, but, oh, but then, it was. But, the, remember but, yeah, so when I told I, you and yeah, I said. Can yeah, I complete I my point? Too. What I saw, I was very. C scared. Can I complete my point? Yes. Oh. What I'm trying to put across is that um, these laws that you are saying, for example, um, Dudu mentioned that you need a permit. Mm -hmm. The permit is not to restrict individuals from expressing their rights. I agree. Instead, the permit is set up so that the police would provide protection. To guide them. And guide them whilst they are doing their procession. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in our case, the police or the state uses it to determine either you are given your right or not, which in itself is illegal. Secondly, these are colonial laws that were put in place by the colonial master to restrict the anti-colonialist Gambians who were fighting against colonialism. Because they were showing their dissatisfaction with the colonial mark. Like I said, don't but up to this day, we have failed in building a nation state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is why we are faced with a problem where laws that are not, are not um, genuine to our people mm -hmm. are, are, are being used against them. We have seen so many processions in this country, and, are, and, and, and I'll stick to that. Even the double guy you are speaking of, wasn't the police that used force against him, that was why the youths came out? Wasn't it that he was beaten by the anti-crime until he died? That is why the youths came out. Yeah. So even that case you're using, yeah. it is because the police had used force against the people. Uh, if like people are given their rights and freedoms, mm -hmm. and then they are respected, I am telling you, even if Madi calls for protest, mm -hmm. which he has the right to call for, people will go on the street, show their dissatisfaction, and go back home. The three years Jordan's first protest happened here. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And it was a protest against the government. It was a protest against but the, the president. But the way it was organized was perfect. Regardless. The point I'm trying to put across is that if people are led to practice their right, nothing will happen. But if you use force against them when, you have, uh, when they have a God-given right, then it becomes problematic. So for me, and I'll continue to say that, we must let people express themselves. We must let people have the right to show their dissatisfaction with the state. Regardless of who is in power, you need the third force to be seen. You need people to show you your mistakes. And if you as a state cannot take that, then you are not ready for leadership. But at times, respectfully too. But then, Sometimes think, the way but, we behave. But then, uh, is it not yeah. about? It's about time we start talking about these things because there isn't. It's not going to stop. We will have protests. Yes. We will have uh, people advocating for it. We will have people going. Out. Our neighbors, Senegal. I think they protest every single day. Huh? The way they do it. Every day they <laughs> protest, right? But at the end of the day, 
Uh, I mean, some of them have turned bad, you know, especially the last Sonko one, 14 mm. people, those ones are bad. I saw people but who were selling stones yeah, in but, kilos. Yes, <laughs> but at the end of the day, in all democracies, I know we are a developing one, protests are part of the normal yeah. living. Exactly. You are not satisfied with how, what Kirfato is doing, you come to our page, you let us know. Mm. That is a protest. Mm. You are not satisfied with Without the press. insults. Yeah, you are not, I mean, they still insult <laughs> us and we don't block them. It's bad. You are not happy with what the president is doing. You are not happy with Nawek, mm -hmm. you go to Nawek and, um, and show your, and show your frustration. Yeah. Those things are normal. But I think it's the stigma that we have. When we say protest, hey, it's about time government, CSOs, and us, the media, to start talking about these things. Because exactly. to be honest, <clears throat> it is so frustrating for people to say, ah, because maybe those people, when they tell us to bring them here, we will not even say, ah, do 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 these are guaranteed rights for every citizen to frustrate, um, to demonstrate or say things that they are not um, happy, happy with. But the government should also know that they are going to come out, they're going to be arrested. But even our security forces, anytime they come in contact with protesters, there's always a problem. Oh, yes. And I can understand why the president will say, the because anytime the they, yeah. we it have confrontation ugly. with the police, yeah. Tear gas there's always head. a problem. Yeah. Yes. They yeah. are yeah. gassing yeah. people. They are beating people. They are also stoning them. Stoning them. Because when they do that, when they come after you, you run. People the first thing you get is to let But sometimes us, we provoke that. Sometimes. With insults and yeah. attacks so throwing stones. We need to be a honest. Lot of we yeah, need to be honest. That's the thing. I yeah. think honesty of, is key yeah. here. It, yeah. it is key. I think honesty is key. Sometimes we provoke me, them. Because I, the police just don't come and jump on top of people. You see them hold their lines. Even the leadership will try to address people and they like. But somebody naughty like me <laughs> wants problem. <laughs> Police jump on A and M double and co. I will get a stone and create something. Yeah. And sometimes when it gets ugly, I'm nowhere to be seen. I started it and went home. All these issues happen. Mm. And this is not the first time Madi called for a protest. He organized series of protests Even here against the American embassy. Yes, and he I was never denied permit. He was allowed to do so. But those ones were specified what yeah. needs to be done, where to meet, what time, how to do it. That's why I said it's not only enough you tell people, let's go out. But, 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 but in Madi's defense, though, yeah. Dudu, I watched that program. Yes. What Madi was saying was this. Um, we should not be talking about, we were talking of, it was about the audit report. Mm. And what Madi said was, for example, dude, this guy, uh, Sam Sar, should not be defending, um, like, uh, and accusing not be the, accusing the, the audit, audit, uh, auditor audit general. general. Instead, the Gambian people should, should be, be out there, right now asking for, answers. asking for answers from authorities because of the revelations that are coming out from the audit report. Mm -hmm. And I think he was not like, hey, it's Nen Nen right now, the, Nen Nen it, he said, it's a metaphor. He said, he, yeah, the way he metaphor. said it, yeah. the way he said it, he's like, why are we talking about this? By now, we, we should, should have been, yeah. asking, for should have been yeah. at, asking for answers. So it was in that context. That is you breaking down what he said. Yes. And that's exactly what he but said. But that's what he said. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. That's I what said, he that's said. Like, I'm agreeing. You that's exactly that. what he no, said. We never <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is somebody is sitting somewhere else hmm. and explains what Madi said in a different context. Yeah, and right. said, hey, Madi is actually calling for violence. Mm. You, you see what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah. yeah. So, bas so basically, that's why for me, I keep saying, it should be addressed. Madi, fr from what Madi said, I listened to it and I'm like, okay, I understand exactly what Madi is saying. Mm -hmm. That's me understanding what Madi is saying. Somebody sits somewhere and says, Madi, Laila, Madi, Madi we get talented. Wahi, wahi, that's how that wahi, person, wahi, 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 that's how that person wahi, wahi, understands what Madi, what Madi said. said. I think what is you know what, is what I'm saying? Yeah, and the way he was talking yes, to, and he should and have and been more calm. No, no, but passion, it's about, passion. Yes, so it's passion. Let's see one thing. You, and it's about the country. You talked about a very serious um, and important point here, which is um, we need to, like, um, we need to start talking about things. But sensitization is important. Very because important. we have seen demonstrations here. We yeah. have seen definitely how sometimes I believe that the PIU or the police, they are they're behaving in ways that, to be honest, is yeah. not acceptable. Exactly. And we have seen civilians as well, how talking about the incident that he mentioned, that day I was actually going somewhere around, but you remember, I called you. Yes. Mm -hmm. What I saw yeah. was there was no police at all. Exactly. It was just people, yes. burning tires. And I asked somebody what happened. And then he said to me, mm -hmm. 
the guest of Omni Haumata. So that particular person born in Tyres yeah. did not even know what happened. What, happened? what yeah, is the <clears throat> issue? So I understand and I respect everybody has a constitutional right and we should go out and then we should hold the government accountable. I do not have any problem with, with that. that yeah. But I think we need to be, be more, more disciplined. Yeah. But that is where the police comes in. We need to in. be yeah. more disciplined yes. and we Us. need to understand as well because this democracy that we're enjoying, we're still, we still don't understand it fully. Mm -hmm. and, and I think so, every, yeah. yes. But when you talk Most. about freedom of speech, Most. others believe you can say anything. Mm. Exactly. And that's not correct. Exactly. Yeah. I have been insulted so many times for believing in what I believe. Mm. I've been insulted so many times for having a different opinion from Fatu. Yes. And, you know, to a point that some would tell Fatu that I should not even be on the platform. Yes. <laughs> Just so, because we don't believe. So, so many times. <laughs> like, I would mention him and he would go back on Facebook today <laughs> and insult me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and he would always ask Fatu, if you're inviting our UDP people, make sure Oli is not there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't sit here and I say I belong to this political party. Yeah. I sit here and then, for me, I, I, I believe I am being honest. I, I talk about what, what how I feel it. and what I believe in. And mm -hmm. from talking to people, things that they would tell me, and then I have a platform, and I would come and talk about it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't talk about things that Fatu wants me to say yeah. or somebody else on Facebook wants me to say. And we have seen that how I have had people telling me, this is what you should address. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I don't want to address that. Maybe this is what I want to address. <laughs> so basically, I think we just need to respect each other. There are certain things, they are black and white. Yeah. It should not be done, it should not be done, period, regardless. Yeah. But there are certain things I think we all equally need more understanding. And again, as I said, Madi and Baro, they yeah, should address their situation <laughs> in the right platform yeah, if yeah, they yeah. feel that Madi was wrong or Baro was wrong. Yeah. But for me, it, but I the think, platform yes, um, was so wrong. For yeah. me, I, I think when we say Gambians don't understand democracy, I think it's very demeaning. No, it's Personally. a fact. No, no, no. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> what is democracy? You yeah. have the understanding. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. You no, no, have no, the no, understanding. Let me, let me finish. I think, yeah. um, <clears throat> in our opinion, mm -hmm. this is why we must be able to build a nation state. Mm -hmm. This is why we must be able to build our laws and rights that reflect us. Mm -hmm. And when we say democracy, this is the will of the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the will of the people isn't based on understanding. It is based on what the people want. And this is how we must be able to define democracy. Just because America is doing something or Britain is doing something doesn't mean that's democracy. Our yeah. people know what's democracy. Yeah. And our people have a voice and our people ha want to be listened to. <coughs> and this is what we are talking about. Yeah. Democracy is praxis. It's practical. I saw somebody stealing. He was at the he says no, see democracy. No, no, Lulu, Lulu, did it. Lulu, 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 you know, the um, detergent. Yeah. Mm. What I'm trying to put across is ne. So you wahe ne, so you need to understand in them. I, I think it's the same argument. So you wahe, so you need to understand in politics. Mm -hmm. Do 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 am. Yeah. Kuneka hamna linga buga. Yeah. Kuneka hamna rights and privileges. Kuneka hamna ne. So made feeli. The maneka de flu because even democratically personality. So in personality, mm -hmm. is democratic. Our conscience is democratic. Mm -hmm. I'm a moral mm -hmm. um a moral standing. Lulu <coughs> is democracy. I'm a law definitely is right. I'm a law definitely is wrong. So, Lulu, so you are then you use the, the problem we are having today mm -hmm. is because we are using a definition that is alien to us mm -hmm. to define what our democracy is. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, more than you, so you are talking about you have a platform. You yeah. still build on that. Yeah. We are not doing justice to our country, we are not doing justice to our people. More than you have a platform, you have a leadership, you are talking about redefine what yeah. is democracy. Mm -hmm. But, so you are talking about understanding. Man, Lolo, do they agree? Because yeah. so they message tell you today, well, I'm them secure, well, I'm them secure. I'm not talking to you today. Or again, I'm conversations. You understand that these people know maybe what the state is doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm on platform that could express something more. Yeah. What I, um, I don't have to worry more. Democracy has to be in praxis. Mm -hmm. But you know, people fail, and there's a big gap. You know, you have no intellectual see actually. They have no you as leaders. Then then you are teach. This is why today we have a deficiency. But as far as Tejun Lolu, the name continues to these problems. Because we are losing a lot. We yes. understand what they want. And this is why we will always be in conflict with them. Mm -hmm. And because the state has all resources of torture, 
The state has all resources of authority. Mm -hmm. We are going to continue to you because we want obedience. Mm -hmm. But we have never sat to listen to what our people want. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand democracy. For man, it's a misinformation. But that's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. You and mentioned something you right that somehow. you said redefined. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's well, the key word there. Well. So it has to be redefined. Well. Why the democracy we have, mm -hmm. or the democracy that Gambians talk about, I can tell you a lot of people don't understand it. They but don't. as you said, if we redefine it to our... We'll help them understand. With us, then you need to be on the same page. But as of now, so when we say uh, we don't understand the democracy, because it's still not redefined. But ah. so that redefine you said is the key word here for us to all of us to be on the same platform. Now, mm -hmm. let me help you with one thing. Mm -hmm. I always advocate that the democracy in America, we cannot have the same democracy in this country. Not possible. Because one of the pillars of democracy is rule of law. Mm -hmm. Are our laws the same? No. no. It's definitely not the same. Yeah. What people are used to here is different from another country. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just, you know, wanting to lean on when he said we need to redefine. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with him that we should define yeah. our own democracy. Yeah. But you cannot tell me, okay, people in this country did this, so we have to replicate the same thing. So, so, so. It doesn't work all the time. No, you do this now. No, 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 I'm not even talking about <laughs> Madi so, so, and Samsa. So, Generally, yeah. the concept of democracy in this country, yeah. this is what I am pushing. Mm -hmm. People will tell you, it is my right to do this. It mm -hmm. is my right to say this. Yeah. The question is, are you the only one who have a right? You must respect other people's, people's right. right. It is my right to protest, mm -hmm. but it is also people's right to access our roads. roads. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> obstruction in any form, mm -hmm. you cannot call that democracy. Yeah. You have a right, others too have a right. Yeah. Because plying that road, it's what put a, a plate of food on the table. Yeah. If you don't allow, give them that access, you are depriving them of a right. Mm -hmm. This is why I said some people, when you talk about democracy, they only see themselves. Yeah. What they can benefit, there's anger that I want to show yeah. out. There is, there is, you know, an emotional feeling in me. It must die down. Mm -hmm. What they think about is me, me, me. And right is reciprocal. It's it given thing. It is. If I have to express mine, I have to respect other people's yeah. rights. Yeah. That's the angle I am talking about. Mm -hmm. We are nurturing a democracy. Yeah. Yeah. The system in place we have, when you engage people, freedom of speech, people insult, they will tell you, you know, freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Freedom of speech does not necessarily have to be foul language. Mm -hmm. Kemo is talking sense. Yeah. If he goes online, right now there are people disagreeing with him and insulting him. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying, instead of for them to listen to him, learn from it, implement it, anything that comes from Kemo, they don't want to hear. Yeah. Why he's UDP? Mm -hmm. When I talk the same thing, I am APRC, they don't want to take anything from yeah. me. What country are we building? Yeah. We must see each other with one lens than we're all Gambians. Gambians. Differences shouldn't divide us. Yeah. It should help us to learn from each other. The difference we have when we discuss about it, <coughs> it will help me to build over that and yeah. make things better. better. That's why I said when I go to platforms, I don't want to know who's coming. Yeah. I don't want to even know the topic. I never ask you for a topic. Yeah. I come here, I sit. Yeah. Everybody I find here, for me, is a brother and a sister. That's we true. can discuss and die. That's true. This is my philosophy. That is true. That is true. Okay, um, uh, Esa. <laughs> me, I mean, I told everybody, Esa always comes. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah, you always learn. Anyway, uh, so what we're discussing is, the, um, we're, we're starting first with the, the president's remarks, especially the Eid remarks. What's your reaction when you heard about it? Well, um, when I heard about it, I think... Um, you know, because mostly here when people make statements, um, you find a group of people who are interested in just a portion mm -hmm. of it. statement. <laughs> and that's what they will put out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so it was, when, when because I was home, somebody came and said, did you listen to your president? I said, what happened again? <laughs> uh, and said, Allah, <laughs> so I thought maybe it was um, you know, just in our politics, mm -hmm. basically, like his style people, his opponents and all that. Um, but then, you know, <laughs> when I listen to Reid, I mean, I saw that portion of the statement mm -hmm. where he, I mean, attacked Madi Jobate. I was really upset, mm -hmm. but then I took time to also listen to his entire speech. Mm -hmm. And even um, mm -hmm. some of the remarks made by some, you know, yeah, some yeah, individuals, yeah, some yeah. elders yeah. there. Yeah. Remember, I saw so yesterday, I was telling you that... <laughs> yeah, there was a man who was saying that, um, <laughs> you know, may Allah protect you... Um, 
from people that will come and tell you remove this one, appoint this one, and all that. <laughs> so that was a lobbying strategy. Um, <laughs> we will come to that. We will come to that. <laughs> I listen to I listen to the president's statement. I think you know there are a lot of you know um, sense he made mm -hmm. in some of the remarks. I mean those were really good. Exactly. Especially, especially the attitude of people towards work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's something mm -hmm. that I, I really have a problem with because it cuts across all institutions. Okay. In and this I was country. happy that he addressed. Yeah, yeah he yeah. talked about that. I mean even UTG um, when you go there where I am from. It's so pathetic. Um, the attitude of people towards work, yeah. be it admin staff and academic staff, came and can attest to that. He was there. Some lecturers will come one hour late to class. Some students will go up to campus and they'll call you and say, I'm not, coming to yeah. class. I'm not coming to school. But well, we I don't mean, even have classes. So exactly. <laughs> so you, you, it's, it's something that cuts across. And I think it's good that the president talked about that. Mm. So, um, but then where, the, where the problem was, because I couldn't see the link, because I listened that, to the yeah. statement, mm -hmm. getting to Mardi's point, mm -hmm. You know, he, he was talking about the attitude of people towards work. He said, these are the people that will come to work 10, they leave at, I mean, 3, and then they are the ones that are always complaining, criticizing the government. Then he mentioned Madi, and I was like, is Madi even a civil servant? <laughs> You, you see, when you're making that's statements, that's especially that. as a leader, you must draw connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're talking about attitude of people towards work. Mm -hmm. These are the people that are busy criticizing government, and then he said... Madi Jamadi is one. So I was like, is Madi even a civil servant? Well, listen, I, 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 exactly. So I think, I think this would have been, if he were, was just talking about civil society, human rights issues, criticisms, that yeah, like you said, it. people have rights, but also other people also have rights. Where your rights stop is where somebody's rights begin. begins. Yeah. But not only that, you have rights, but as well you have responsibilities. I think that we can draw the connection. Mm -hmm. But then he was talking about civil servants at was work and then jump to Mardi, which was just unfortunate. So if he had maintained that trend when he was talking about, I mean, his government plans, you know, talking about the attitude of civil servants, especially the attitude of people towards work, I was really much interested in that. Yeah. If the president had really addressed that and took it with seriousness, everybody was going to applaud him. But where he just um, messed up everything was when he personally went on Mardi. I mean, I think that was very unnecessary. I mean, that was really unfortunate coming from the president. But it's not the first time we've had the president, you know, attack Ismail Sisi here, you know, which was really unfortunate. Um, at some point also, I think the president is creating unnecessary attention. I mean, on people uh, making, not necessarily to say that um, these people are not important, but making people so relevant on issues that are not very, very important. Madi, as a citizen, has a right to, I mean, to, to, to complain about things that he is unhappy with as a citizen. I mean, you as a president also have a right to say, I'm not happy with what Madi is doing, but I think you should even appreciate that. Welcome that, like Dudu said. It's an opportunity for you to build on your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Even if you think that what Mari is saying is not true, you don't agree with it, I don't think you should go public you know, to, to talk about that, to address him specifically. I mean, this is the difference between Yaya Jame and, even, and, and Baro. Jame with all his boss, Jame will never mention anybody individually on a platform. He will never do that. He will just silence you in a way, but he will never <laughs> attack you personally. Oh, wow. So I, I don't think, I, I think Baro is just... He's a good PR guy. Yeah, so I, is a good PR guy. I think, I think the guy, I think the guy is really... I mean, the presidency has been reduced to a joke in this country. We have, to be, we have to be I mean, honest. honest with each other. Um, the presidency is not to be uttering, I mean, such... Sorry for my language, yeah. but reckless statements. You don't do that. The presidency is the highest office of the land. When you are holding such office, I mean, your remarks, you should be very measured in your remarks, and you should make sure that um, issues are addressed rather than personalities. So what Madi talked about in terms of um, citizens going to protest, I mean, to demand for answers, well, it's his right to say that people can go to protest. But sometimes you can also understand politicians when they are talking, um, in the sense that when a president is sitting and somebody said, people should go out to protest. The president is only thinking of his position. <laughs> I mean, for him, what comes to his mind as a leader mm. is that what this man is saying <laughs> could be a threat to my, to my presidency. Yeah, let's go that's, out that's, on the street. Exactly, let's go out <laughs> on the street. But you have to also understand that this is what you have chosen. Mm. Democracy is what we have chosen over dictatorship. In 2016, we decided that we are going to vote you in as president. We are going to remove someone else that we think was you know, violating our rights. So you still expect this, just like Obama will say, that democracy can be messy, 
you know, fizzy and also noisy and complicated as well. Mm -hmm. So you live in a society where democratic values, uh, these are, this, this is, I mean, fragile democracy. There's no I mean, perfect are, system. There's no perfect system. So we have such a system where people are used to this for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, trying to <laughs> question certain things. So mm -hmm. you must be able to accommodate um, dissenting opinions and views. Yeah. Especially when seriously, we all know with honesty that there are wrong things that are happening in government. Mario was talking about corruption, rampant corruption mm -hmm. in this government. That's something that Barrow cannot even deny. Mm -hmm. But it's rather unfortunate that he does not even address some of these issues. Throughout the aid speech, Barrow should have talked about corruption in the government. Mm -hmm. But he did not talk about that. Mario was talking about corruption. Instead of you coming to address that indirectly, but you are coming after somebody who is talking about corruption in your government. And the government has failed in that regard. So I, I think it was rather unfortunate that he came after Mahdi. But I think, you know, the speech, some parts of it, if you look at it, really these were very, um, you know, yeah, very I, good I, I wanted to come to the speech. Um, Oli, you are a PR person, and we know there's communication. Um, um, and I think most of the time, I say this a lot of the times, um, President Barrow delivers very good messages sometimes, but it's lost in transition. For example, when he was talking about, when he was talking about the people coming to work at late, late during Jamie's time, I, I remember when I was in Gamtel, how many times they cut half of my salary because I'm not a morning person. I don't go to work on time. And this is the normal way things are done now in this country. You go to government agencies. You go there. The, the person you're going to see is not in the office at 11 o'clock. The president doesn't want that to happen. He gave examples of himself coming to work at 7.45. He comes to work at 7.45, and some of these officers are not even in the office. Talking about people in Quadrangle and other places who don't come on time, but they are the first person to go home. This is a very key message. This should have been what we would all media houses should be talking about. But instead, we are talking about his attack on Mahdi. So you can see the message that he delivered was super powerful. Especially but part of civil service reform. reforms. Reforms. Yeah. Definitely. When he said, and he wants to change to the extent he created a new ministry. Yeah, for that. and he even said, um, I am, he's, he's not going to be the battle who's going to be quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, remember all the time, I, I am an advocate of that. <laughs> President Moro, they were, they were, mm -hmm. I always say that. But President said he's going to be talking. He's going to be taking tougher actions. He is going to be tough. And I'm, 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 I'm imagining that's going to be on policy. Mm. That was a very good message. But what happened? <laughs> the two sentences that he said about <laughs> Mali, <laughs> <that> was <laughs> yeah. speech, that was really good. He talked about even when I, when the Banyulians were trying to bomb him, <laughs> <laughs> saying about the Banyulians, <laughs> 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 he made it nice. Mm. The president was very nice to them. He said, I'm very happy with Banjul, and I'm going to work hard. I'm yeah. going to deny the person just to distract yes, them from all whatever our they think young. he was yeah. going to do. <laughs> but, you know, as a communication no, um, person, but you know, I think the presidency, yeah. his PR team should be going to work. But you know, I have said this yeah. so many times. Yeah. And then it comes back because message, the message you're putting across, <coughs> first of all, you need to look at your audience. Mm -hmm. Then you need to, the people that are listening, where you were. And you look at your target audience as well. <coughs> you want these people to get to. Yeah. So I definitely agree, and I have said this from the beginning, that the platform was just so wrong. The messaging was wrong. Yeah. Because uh, that's why I keep saying, if it's something he needs to address, there's another platform for that and another group. So that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. So it comes back to that. The, the, it was it. Yeah. You're talking, it should have been to unify the country. Mm -hmm. Talk about issues that are affecting this. So I've always talked about President Barrow's PR. I remember when I, when I used to work at Standard Chartered, our CEO would not ever speak without us saying this and this and this is what you have to talk about. Yeah. I even talked about how the president needs to have a holding statement with certain issues. Yeah. Do not go beyond this. Yeah. It doesn't matter who is asking you the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the answer. Stick to it. That's mm -hmm. it. The next thing is, I will get back to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that way, you would not make any blunders. That way, you would not take away the beautiful message that you were delivering. Because where the good message stays and where the bad one goes, the bad one fly, travels faster than the good one. So yes. now everybody is talking about the president of Mali, the president of Mali. Mm -hmm. People have even forgot to All mention right. the whole... Uh, because he mentioned it, that's why I even remember that. that. Same as me. That's and I, and no. I took time to actually listen to the this whole, the whole thing. But, but then yeah. for me too, I was... That's the only thing that I picked from that. Yeah. So I think his PR team and the president himself too, um, either he has to listen to the PR team or the PR team have to do better. Yeah. So there's a miscommunication somewhere between these two teams. And it has to be, if, if this is the issue that he needs to talk about, let him stick to that. Yeah.
It doesn't matter who is asking him further questions. Yeah. Mm. Do not answer. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, President, like you, President you, Obama is the best yes, you, you, in, it, in, in, in the entire American Yeah, but then he knows his limits. But whenever he goes, look at when they go to debates, they get one week off to prepare for this yes. debate, uh, to the, prepare for this public speaking. The fact yeah. is, yeah. people can it. ask you anything, anything but yeah. nobody but cannot force you to give an answer. And then certain things, so aside, simple as there's, there's what's called just a holding statement. Yeah. You, you, you stick to that. Yeah. Because, like, for example, if the president is going to certain places, we should expect, we say our team should expect certain questions would be asked. Yeah. Yeah. Prepare him answers to Based on trending issues. Based questions. And tell him to limit himself to stop his answers. I, 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 I think that I, I can give you a typical example. Yeah. Um, I think after the December election, mm -hmm. um, when the team of journalists, international journalists, went to State House um, yeah. for the media briefing, the president was there answering questions. And a Nigerian journalist asked a question related to Nigeria, between Nigeria and Gambia. But it's like the president was lost. <laughs> and the response was just bad. Mm. So I was like, what you expect is that these are international journalists that are coming. Local mm. media houses had their, um, I think they had, they had their own opportunity. These mm. are international media houses that are coming. You know that journalists are coming from different countries. I think you should be able to brief the president yeah. uh, about issues that you think are you know, currently going on between the two countries. Expecting that, these are journalists who want to write about issues affecting their countries. Yeah. And Nigerian journalists will want to get a story from that event mm -hmm. that will be connected to Nigeria. At yes. least when he goes back, he will write something that is that has to do with between Nigeria and Gambia. Mm -hmm. But the, the question, I can't remember exactly, but the, the journalist posed a question, and the president was like, can you come again? And the guy repeated again, and the president did not even understand. That's, that's so embarrassing in front of the entire world people listening. And so I think the PR team could, could really do yeah, that. Yeah, just yeah. to add that, like, sorry, it's cable. Um, it's like when he went to China. About, everybody knows China and their one, what's it called? One China, one China, one China policy. policy. So before he went, I keep saying this and I would repeat it again. I think he should have been briefed on that. You would expect that if you go to China, that's a question they would ask you. So at least brief him on that. So once he's asked that, he knows exactly what. Uh, even the Chatham House, the yes. Chatham House, the so, 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 so thing. I think they, they need mm -hmm. to definitely do better. Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. I'd, I'd just like to piggyback on what um, Essa had mentioned earlier. Um, and I also like to point out something. Mm -hmm. Every briefing or every statement that the president has done with the, with the press, if it's not scripted, has been a disaster. And I think that's something that he has to look at, um, look within and find an answer. It's either Gaduale or trying to be petty whenever he's speaking, you know, uh, freestyle. And that is something that I think is a, is a big concern for all of us. Um, he needs to focus and he needs to solve issues that are affecting Gambia. One would think that on Korite Day, speaking to elders of the country, he would speak about the corruption like Esa has mentioned, high cost of living, security, and so many other things. But this also proves to us or exposes his priority as a leader. Is his priority to solve our problems as a country, or is his priority to make sure that he silences dissent and keeps his presidency intact? Um, these are things I think Gambians need to ask themselves the question and come up with answers for themselves. And I think it's a wake-up call for all of us. And I think I, I personally think the PR team should should do a, a lot better. I quite I agree. I mean, when you say these things, they say "Mungi you know, we want the best. We want our best, the best for our president. We want the best for our country, and and we are going to say these things because if President Barrow fails, we all fail. If the Gambia fails, then it becomes a big problem for us, especially the poor, the poor and the less privileged. So we, it's not about um, wanting anybody's job, but it's more about wanting the best for this country because yeah. I think I've said this president Barrow so is so unique he speaks fluently in all of these languages when he speaks from his heart and he speaks to the Gambian people we listen and we understand so I think he should be speaking but when he speaks he should also be very limited to what is the topic but what is going audience. on and mm -hmm. I think it's important when he does that he delivers and a, a lot of Gambians appreciate that now let's move on okay. to Rahel. Uh, cabinet. Uh, family health. 
When we spoke here the last time, I said, What were you expecting? You said, Actually, we're not expecting much. Yes. You, you, in fact, you said, we, we are not expecting anything. Mm. Um, but we all agree that maybe one or two cabinet members will be given to coalition partners. Uh, the president, when he spoke uh, to Lamin Cham of Standard, he said this government is going to comprise of coalition partners. This is for APRC, I'm not minister. Buma wa Ken, because me and Mofa gives you APRC. APRC, I'm not PPP, I'm not for. Ah, NCP, so much you can't know. Get on a hurry, my job goes amusa. My good cabinet. That's my husband. And all the coalition partners, apart from um, Ahmad Ba, actually, um, what happened, Dodo? Well, thank you. Let me first say this. Uh, sometimes people feel like, you know, I'm a bluff. Not actually. No, not. I did mention it. I did research on world politics. That's where my focus is. That's what I studied more. Mm -hmm. I always say when it comes to Gambian politics, mm -hmm. it's not a problem for me because I contain the bigger one that you cannot compare to what happens here. I'm a keen listener. Mm -hmm. And I do connect dots. What you say, what Kemo is saying, what Essa, I sit and reflect, I'll connect dots. And mm -hmm. I'll see a lane that, OK, this is what is coming up. My predictions, uh, my predictions are based on that, not just mere guessing or mere saying. Yeah. You know, this is why sometimes I will give you reasons why I say it. Now, looking into issues, we are a political party. Mm -hmm. If we are supposed to have a lot of appointees in cabinet, yeah. the use will come. Mm. It will be discussed in our mess. Yeah. I will just whisper to your ear, you don't yeah. get to Kemo, to Esa, it yeah. starts going around. Yeah. At some point in time, what is trying to be hidden, others will get the information. Yeah. I sense a lot of issues about that. And again, whenever it comes to alliances, we're not the only partners. There are others. And everybody is pushing to have something. Now, when you want to give a bigger number, they will say, no, 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 what about us? Yeah. This always becomes a challenge. And this type of alliance we had with the independent aspirants and all that has never happened in this country before. And everybody, or most of them, will at least be expecting something. Even if you don't say it, you want it. Yeah. Now, coming into cabinet positions, I am making it clear we never had any concrete agreement that you will give us this. It was not there. Mm. We love it that we want cabinet positions. But they said, <coughs> after all, it's a government. The president is at liberty. The prerogative is his mm -hmm. to choose who he wants to appoint. This mm -hmm. we know. This is why I kept saying we're not expecting much. It's not only APRC and PP. You have several other parties. Okay, yeah. And I knew even if cabinet will be reshuffled, everybody is not going. Yeah. You know, sometimes based on certain relations, experience you have with the past in certain people, this is Africa for you. No yeah. matter what happens, you lean on them. You wouldn't let go. Yeah. Okay, these are my people. Yesterday we did A, B, and C. We see it happen not only in cabinet, but in other institutions as well. Yeah. That you will expect. You ask other people, they'll say, let everybody go. Others will say, no, 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 but this one is a good politician. <laughs> that is their opinion. Mm -hmm. They're seeing politics. That's the lens they're wearing. Yeah. That one is a technocrat. He's looking at nationalism. You either <laughs> deliver or you go. Mm -hmm. Me, this is my philosophy. That's why I am saying hiring and firing, up to, left to me alone, it will continue. You appoint Dudu, he doesn't do the job, get rid of Dudu, bring somebody else. And even within APRC, I tell them, I said, whoever has the opportunity to be appointed by Baro, if you don't deliver, I will take, Baro, if you're hearing me, I said, Fire them. let them go. Yeah. And it is not betrayal, it is you who failed. Yeah. Sometimes when the president does it, jump far. What led to that? Yeah. This is a mentality we need to remove. But again, what was assured to us was government positions. Mm -hmm. They never said it has to be cabinet. cabinet. Okay. They said government positions. positions. We will give you positions in government. And positions in government is not only cabinet. No. I believe there are All other appointments yeah. that would come. Will be coming. And uh, especially the politicians, etc. Some of them, that's where they qualify. Do, do. Because they don't have <laughs> the academic background, yeah. that capacity to handle <laughs> certain positions. I could address people, move a crowd, 
that is a gift or something I learned. Mm -hmm. But give me an administration to run, I will fail. Okay. So being vocal does not mean you must be this. These are issues two people to, need to look to at. Understand. But it would have been very appreciative Sitted. that at least one position comes to APRC. APRC. Yes. yes, there are people who are appointed that APRC recommend. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they are not APRC. Money. You you can uh, equally say uh, that. Okay, <laughs> name them. If the president appoints them, it is APRC who said, okay, take X and make him a minister. Okay, I, I think one of them. I, I know one of them. I'll say his name, Job. Yeah. I'll Job. say his yeah. name, yeah. Oh, okay, no, I wouldn't say Job. Job, Job, Job is Job, one of them. Job. That we Abba, recommended Abba, the president no, that not, no. take Job. Yeah. But Abba was APRC. Yeah, no, he no, used to be APRC. He used to, but he's not. He's oh, was not, not recommended He used to be APRC. You cannot take him out of APRC too. His family still some are APRC. He's from Buyam. He's well connected yeah. with his people. Wherever you see us and Abba, you, you cannot like. But do you recommend, the APRC recommended? Um, Joe. Yeah. So I want to make this clear. But yeah. that's not what our people are looking for. Yeah. Our people want to see somebody in our executive, yeah. those that hold positions that are active, to be giving a, a ministerial You think Bakso, Bakso will make a better candidate? <laughs> no, but Biles, yes, sir, Biles. You are allowed to report you to Bakso. <laughs> but then, okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. APRC Dudu. And all these coalition partners and independents, mm. what did they bring to the table? Apart from Hamad Ba, nothing. Mm. <laughs> they mm. brought nothing to the table. I don't understand. I don't understand. Are you looking at the National Assembly? Yeah, ah. they brought no, nothing. Well, they 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 that would be, uh, but we have no, our limitations. No, we have our limitations. We have our limitations. We have our limitations. Uh-huh. <laughs> They lost KA and almost all of West Coast. But we have 18 numbers. These no, are key places when you talk about politics in this country. Yeah. Yeah. These are the priorities. Yes. Yes. Dudu, that's absolutely fine. But NPP is the president's party. And we now say, as Numo Konetonye, it's the mm. Bolongkano party, which, which is fine. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, Dudu, is mm. you people, all of the independents, the party members, all of the grand coalition, apart from Amorba, you guys did not put anything on the table. No. So what did you put? Did KMC, you we want to. ตอนนั้นเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเราเรียกอะไรเรา
even if, for example, I believe that even if Suleiman has con had contested as an independent, mm -hmm. even if he didn't win, he would have had a very close margin based on the capabilities and the track record. But he will not win. I'm not, I, I cannot say that because that, that didn't happen. But based what I'm on saying, what is happening on the ground yes. and knowing the nitty gritties of local government, uh, of the parliamentary and local government. Well, I think the same experience have you have in politics scenario. is the same experience all of us have. And in as much as the platform plays a part, I do believe that the individual also plays it's a part. A because part. if that wasn't yeah. the case, independent yeah. candidates wouldn't win. Yeah. Tumanja left PPP and PPP, one of the, one of the, the strong goals of PPP yeah. is Bandur. Yeah. No. Tumanja left PPP and contested as the an independent politics candidate. Of Banyul, and I said it here the last Mandan. time. Banyul yeah. politics is different from KM. Banyul KM politics is, is the same as Westport. is different from the provinces. The point is, I think also at some point, um, we are unfair to the coalition party. <laughs> exactly. Why That's I'm the point I want to put Why in. I'm saying this is that, mm. you see, these elections, mm. the 2021 December elections and the parliamentary election have shown us one thing, mm. that NPP is not a party that one can claim that it's as big as one might think. Thank you. Now, I cannot imagine you won how many constituencies? Up to the city. No, I mean, in the presidential election. The NPP Grand Coalition Barrow won up to over 40, over 40 constituencies yes. in the entire country. Yes. And then you come to the National Assembly election, you contested 40 and won only 18. And out of those 18, somewhere a very tight margin. Uh, so yeah. one, can tell, one can tell that if not for the coalition partners, probably NPP will not be able to pull anything out of the December election. But I've been saying I mean, it. But that is, I mean, that is the fact. I that mean, that I, what I'm saying is, no, 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 what I'm saying is, if not the support from the coalition yeah. partners, yes. Then NPP, what is NPP? NPP I, is not a force to reckon with. I have a different view. Like, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just trying to I'm connect the dots. The... And it's a fact. <laughs> yeah. It's not about connecting <laughs> dots. It's factual. <laughs> no, but anyway, let, let, let's no, go to Cabinet. Let anyway. <laughs> now, let's go. That's another topic that we should yes. bring. Now, let's not talk about the, the, cabinet. the Cabinet. Now, what is your reaction? Uh, you know, you temo opposition on like Allah, Allah, Kasi, Allah. No, 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 remember Kerim Borufala. Honey, remember Kerim. Let me say this. Honey, um, Fadu. Even me, man, you have been man, more hunger than you have been man, man, UDP la. Mm. Even though I always go after President Barrow, I do believe that this cabinet no, is not it's political. A good one. But Fadu. Yeah. We have so many technicians. <coughs> what happens? Nakala nyo dohale hauma. There are a few people that I, that I didn't expect to be in this government, mm -hmm. and they're there. But I think technically, Pardon. the combination... I think personally, okay, go ahead. Uh, this is a very subjective issue, okay, more, depending yeah. on where you are looking at it from. Mm -hmm. It will be very outstanding, or uh, it will be very surprising for me to say this is a good pick when you have people like Dambasabali as Minister of Agriculture. Oh. <laughs> that, is, that, that, that is a fact. He is not even a doctor, per se. What is he doing as Minister of <laughs> Agriculture? In as much as I understand that these are political positions, but at least you need the technical know-how. You mentioned something that he's not even a doctor. It seems that like this is going around. People are saying that he's let, not a doctor. Let him show us the credentials he has as a doctor, as a medical doctor. No, Nobody calls him Dr. Savage. They just call well, him, but well, people well, are saying whether he earned the title. Yeah, so that's... So that's he's not that's a medical point. doctor, he's not a PhD holder. Really? I don't know where the doctor is yeah, coming so, from. So and that's serious as well, oh, getting yes. somebody in cabinet who is having a title Im that is not earned. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so going back to no, the no, no. What I mean is, what I mean is, this is an official title given think, to him. No, I don't think he. Um, even when you look at the communication that came out, it didn't say Doctor Dembasabali. It only said Dembasabali. Okay. Akam talo ko kum talo kunyo to ah lamen. There, there was this dispenser man dije kafe doctor. Right? <laughs> no, so what about no kumbu? No, but this one is different. <laughs> this one is doing. He's pursuing a medicine, medicine dig, um, medicine, medicine degree in medicine at the at Iowa, but not yet completed. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So for me, that's one. Secondly, um, you, you have people like Mossad Ran, mm -hmm. who have been into one scandal to another, one scandal to another. After selling all of our land, is, begin, is going to start selling our seed. <laughs> you are having those people. No, uh, okay. What is the quality of land of history? Yeah. What capabilities does this individual have to be Minister of Fishery? No, but I did not talk about titles. No, but I'm saying, come to that. I'm saying yeah. capability. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me type, titles don't matter. Mm -hmm. But it's about you heading an institution. Mm -hmm. And how is that institution going to affect the lives of Gambian people? We have a coastline that most countries are, 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 are envious of. How are we making sure that we are using that coastline in our best interest? You need someone there who can be able to put this into, you know, a reality. The positives for me is going to be that we have someone I believe is a very level-headed guy, 
mm -hmm. as the new vice president. Yes. Even if an impeachment should happen today, I'll be happy to say that. At least Badaraju will be head of state until we have fresh elections. Mm -hmm. You have another positive for me who is having prof, uh, 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 who is, uh, um, yeah. that is having prof as minister of ed uh, higher education. I've worked with him at the University of the Gambia. I've seen his contributions to the UTG. And I believe that he's one of the only few Gambians who has done educational management. Mm. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do a right, um, 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 something positive. Mm -hmm. You talk about Queen Jami. What will Queen add as Minister of, of Information? Is he being rewarded because he's NPP spokesperson? You talk about Ibrahima. But he, as Minister of Communication, a journalist, what is he doing as street? Uh, um, um, works, works minister. Barrow was the one who campaigned on bridges and roads. So you have removed the minister who delivered those bridges and roads in which you allegedly won an election by and you, you have removed the individual? What does that tell us? So these are things, if people say it's a positive thing, yes, you've, you've, you have new technocrats in there, but also it also, for us as young Gambians, and for us in the intellectual field as young Gambians, does it mean that we are not enough for the country? Because majority of, of these people have served in government before. Majority of these people were ministers before. Majority of these people were seasoned you know, technocrats, which we have no problem with. But we will also like to see young Gambians head some of these portfolios. In as much as we need the institutional history, we want to also see new blood coming up. I think this is something as a young person representing young people, this is a platform that I can also share this with. Secondly, you talk about the gender disparity. 51% of the population of this country are women. Today, you're having a lot of young women, or, or women in general, who have, you know, who have the credentials and they have the ability to serve this country. Why are we not turning to them? Don't we believe that women can also um, serve? And some, something else that also stands out for me is that the president has changed vice presidents four times in the past five years. Does he have trust issues? These are things that I think Gambians need to ask. So, 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 yeah. so, so for me, if I was going to gauge this, I don't think it's even a pass mark for me. I'd say 40 out of 100. <laughs> and 60 I don't be, that's because, too low. because, so that's yeah, because <laughs> having the likes of Queen Jame, having the likes of uh, Abba, <coughs> having the likes of um, um, Dr. Dem, uh, uh, Demba Sabali, I Actually, think these are political appointments. somebody is telling me that they said Demba has a medical degree. Somebody said he, they said Demba uh, they said. from I, A I U. But then, I, I don't even want to go into those things, but, but, then, but then does the medical board here um, um, recognize that, okay. for example? So, so my thing, Kemo, I think, you know, most of the time the conversation is ministers are just um, ceremonial heads. Yeah, but that needs to change, Fatu. The, the technician of the ministries are the, PSS. Are the permanent secretaries yeah, but, and the directors, but, right? But, but, but those permanent secretaries are also being changed now. But yes. then, but then Move the from one is, area to another know, that you have no, you have no know, experience, you know, expertise one in. Thing, the reason why I believe this is a good cabinet, personally, is this. In 2017, when President, the reason why the coalition did not succeed is this. You have all political heads in cabinet. Compensated. And people have different political agenda. Right. I'm not going to be a head of a political party and come to the government and dance to the NPP tune. Right. Because you want to grow your party. Mm. And in doing that, you are selling another agenda that is not the president's agenda. And that might not even be the country's agenda. So at some point, what we saw was different... Um, political beliefs coming into play in cabinet. Because when you have all these politicians, they are politicians. They have agenda. They book up sympathy with Mugro. So <coughs> there wasn't anything serious happening. Because Kune Kange, Buga Hichu, this government put new, new in. Everybody was doing politicking mm. in, from 2017. Mm. So for President Barrow, I'm thinking is this. Yes, the current coalition, Japalang Yanma, but you know, didn't learn just the government be. But when it comes to cabinet, we don't want divided political ideology here. We want a single, this is an NPP government. We want the, the NPP Pardon. agenda or the national agenda, whatever they say, yes. call it. NDP. That's what we don't want distractions Pardon. of people being in different party. For example, if, um, if for example, you put Duduja there and National Limu Jot, no. uh, Chairmanship Jot, Duduja, NPP, Tahawal, KMC, APRC, Tahawal, Duduja, they did come in APRC, do not president. So, Lulu, the find the friction, no, no. Smoba, unity, the armed cabinet. So, I think bringing technicians, you know, nobody is saying that they, are not known they shouldn't be NPP. 
No. Nobody has a problem with that. In fact, this is why... No, I'm, no, I'm talking yeah. about the, the, program, the reason why I believe it was good not to have politicians... Yeah. No, for me, I don't, I, I don't even have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Because I do believe that every government wants people that will pursue their agenda. Yeah. In fact, this is why political parties have shadow governments mm -hmm. who are made of their, of their members. Yeah. To, so that when, once they are in government, those people can continue the work that they're doing. But what we are saying, have the technical know-how in the field. It's, it's one thing to be a political appointee, but it's, about, it's, it's another thing knowing what's going on in your ministry. And for, for us, it, it, we have always had square pegs and round holes. For example, we have continued to say that our people go to meetings and they are not able to express themselves or talk about issues. It's because they don't understand these things. For example, nobody, regardless of all the corruption that's going on at the Ministry of Health and all of the maternity deaths and everything, but nobody wouldn't say that Dr. Samadhi is not qualified to head that ministry. No, yeah, he's definitely qualified. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When Ibrahim was Minister of Information, no, in as much as we disagreed with him, but you wouldn't say he's not qualified to head that ministry. You would say that may, may be based on his conduct, but it, it was not based on ability. What we are saying is that put people where they can deliver. function and deliver. In as much as you're a political appointee, but if they put a project in front of you, or they put a, a, a concept note, be able to understand <coughs> and absorb what's in that document. <coughs> but for example, let's even say, you know, you have a nurse as Minister of Agriculture for a veterinary nurse alone. You know, so these are things that we, you know, we have to be honest to ourselves. If we want to move this country, we must be able to put people where they can deliver. And for me, that's it. Okay, yes. I, 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 I agree with Kemo wow. that, okay, I think where they put you, you should at least have knowledge to at least know what is going on. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this you have mentioned, and I think, uh, again, we should definitely move away from that. Because there's always this belief and it's saying that anybody can be a minister because you don't do the work. Exactly. It's the technocrats, exactly. it's the PS who, who do the work. And I think, okay, fine, during Jawara time, I think that was applicable because <coughs> before you become a PS, you it was really a parliamentary system. Through, and you've gone yeah. through pretty much all the ministries. Yeah. So you somehow... Seasoned yeah, technocrats, seasoned, seasoned civil you, servant. You become yeah. a commissioner. You've done a lot of things. So that way you can be in any ministry and you will definitely perform. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that needs to change where at least we put people at least where we believe that they can deliver. At the same time too, people <coughs> believe that if you, once you're educated, you're <coughs> able to read and write to a certain degree, you can definitely be able to understand policies. If you are a manager, they believe that you can manage any, any institution. Mm -hmm. So again, that too is part of a belief. That's why we have seen where somebody is a medical doctor and then yeah. you are put in the Ministry of Agriculture because they believe that, okay, you can manage, you can read policies, you can understand. But I, for that one, I would definitely, not that particular ministry, but I would agree generally. that generally, generally yeah. we would want to see people being put in their ministries. But at the same time, if you have a PhD, I believe of somebody who is a PhD holder should be able to understand issues and policies of any where you're put. Not necessarily. If it's not necessary, no, it depends I, on the area. Said, yeah, it depends on the area. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the area. That's what I said is I do agree that we should start that attitude of putting people where, where they, belong. They, yeah. they, they have knowledge. But um, overall, looking at the um, cabinet, the cabinet I think it's a good one. Mm -hmm. I would not comment on the political appointees mm -hmm. because, again, I think these are the people that the president thinks would run his agenda. Mm -hmm. And everybody would definitely want to work with people that you believe the same things and you see eye to eye with. Yeah. Yeah. So that I it don't have a comment. So I, don't, I, I would not comment on, honestly, the politi political appointees. And when we come to the technocrats, I think definitely seeing, uh, you know, His Excellency Badraju being vice president, that just... You know, people are happy about it yeah. because people believe he's a man of integrity. People believe he would deliver. People believe that he is very straightforward. And I don't think he would disappoint. And then that goes to the professor. That goes to the lady, uh, Mrs. Manjang. So these are some of the people that I don't know. But the overall, when you ask and when you read their CVs on paper, these are all qualified people on paper. And, and, and then getting feedback from people that have worked with them or people that know them. Definitely, I think President Barrow has done well, very well, well, right? Well. But now well. we come to the bigger picture. Mm. It's about time our civil service, especially, so this I would say to the new Secretary General. Secretary General. Again, Secretary General is a very, very disciplined and straightforward person, mm. and people know that she's a no-nonsense person. She yeah. would not be 
favoring nepotism, people have said, people that know, know her on a personal level, people that know her on a professional level, have talked about how nepotism is definitely not her way. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think uh, with this news cabinet, I think that our PS, our directors, should start working with their ministers. I think we have seen in the past where people complain about sabotage. Mm -hmm. People complain about information being leaked. Mm -hmm. People complain about having just people around who are not really supporting their line ministers. I mm -hmm. think we need to move forward as a nation, all of us together. We have passed 2021. We have passed National Assembly. Let's work together. And so for the new Secretary General, I think needs civil service reform definitely needs to come. And people who are there to undermine, people who are there to sabotage, people who are there just stealing seats, hitting seats, I think it's about time some have to be retired, some have to be sacked, some have to be demoted, some have to be promoted. There needs to be a review. Then that way we would get back to the glory days of having Gambia to be one of the best civil service in, in Africa. As I know, like for example, um, um, for example, um, my Nakuroke Lustala Plaza, or the chief of staff, but uh, you know, so we we find also no budget. Yeah, but but then I just wanted to add on another point. Um, in as much as because even in the past cabinet, I I I do believe we had competent people. There were people that could, but functionality also resides in the head of the institution. Mm -hmm. And if the, the president doesn't shake himself up and is ready to, to make changes, regardless of whatever you bring up, it's never going to function. Because, for example, the, the coalition partners you are saying, they had a national development plan, which was very focused on development, and it was for the people. But you, you've had um, 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 takes by D.A. Jao. We've, we, we've had takes by Amadou Sane. On some of, the, some of the developmental plans that they came up with, but it was frustrated, and, and that they didn't get the blessing of the head of state. So I think in as much as we are having technocrats in now, we are having people like, for example, Prof, and we are having Badar Rajuv as VP, even though I do believe that VP is one of the most dominant positions in, in the executive, but at least if the head of state himself is not ready to shift and to change the status quo, it's going to be difficult for us to see any meaningful change. So I think Baro himself needs some advice, some personal advice, that it shouldn't be business as usual, and that he should understand that lives are at stake. That we haven't faced so much hardship as a country for a very long time. And people's lives, you know, depend on him. And being president is an important position that you hold. And if he cannot make the changes, I, I do believe, you know, regardless of the team he has, it's not going to change. Man United has all the best players in the world. I support Man United. But we are dreadful because management is a problem. So if no matter how, how much of a team you have, if the management and the coach is not as focused as the players, it's, you know, it's a waste of time. Yes, let me say this. I'll, I'll first begin by saying, for me, mm -hmm. I, I believe it's a good cabinet. Mm -hmm. Looking at the composition, it's not politically yeah. constituted. Yeah. Thing the president is saying, he wants a cabinet that will be inclusive, that Gambians would want to see themselves in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a promise he has delivered. Because most of the uh, people appointed, like you said, we never expected that it would be those people. Yeah. Some were expecting to see somebody like Duduja or somebody yeah. like Bakso as Esa. <laughs> and <laughs> always and yes, and Majanko. But the president says, no, 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 this is not about politics. Yeah. It's about Gambia. Mm -hmm. I believe you have to appreciate that. And looking at them, some of them, like their integrity, their character, the personality in them, the experience, you know, the educational background, uh, looking at that, I would say it's a good one. Yes, those who have been there before, we've been pointing fingers, Ahmad Ba must go, Darame must go. Uh, I would call it like give them a second chance. They've learned in the past whatever didn't go right. Now it's an opportunity for you to do the needful and deliver. What I understand from the president, like he's going to act tough. Yes. You messed up, according to what was going around. He said you're going. Here's another chance. Now, when you fail, he's not waiting for five years. This is what I am foreseeing. Now, talking about the vice president, let me share this. It happened, I was an eyewitness, during the inauguration of the elected and nominated members of parliament. For whatever reason, he came when uh, people were seated. Yeah. He arrived you know, greeted, somewhere greeting. There was no place for him to sit down. I think he was 
thinking somebody will get up and say to honorable minister, have this seat. But nobody did, those who were sitting in front. I was at the back. I could have done that if I, have, if I was seated in front. Yeah. You know what he did? He sat on the carpet. That's when people said, no, 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 you can't sit here. They have to give him a chair that was meant for the MPs. You know, all is not occupied. That's where he sat. For me, we need attitudinal change. No matter what title or what I am, a minister is a minister. I should give him or her the Jew, sir, come and have my seat. I should be the one to squeeze somewhere or even stand at the door and watch the proceedings or the ceremony that was ongoing. This is something I witnessed. I was really disturbed that day that the honorable minister would have to sit on the carpet when people I saw who only have political positions don't even care to shift and allow him to sit down. So I see the humility in him that he's very humble. Nobody needs to tell me. Practical, I was an eyewitness to that. Now, it's a new cabinet. We are hopeful that they will deliver. Mm -hmm. What I am saying here, I think only highlighted, let's support. Yeah. We can criticize when it is due, yeah. but there are some critics, they don't mm -hmm. like Duduja. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, they'll be criticizing and attack. Yeah. It's not going to help us as a country. Support Dudu. If he makes a mistake, talk about it. Yeah. If he messes up, discourse about it, because he's the cause of what has been discussed. Well, he's just starting. You said, no, he's not going today. How do you know? Now, talking about qualifications, I believe as people, yes, I agree. You have your expertise in <coughs> agriculture. Let them give you agriculture. If we have that, we'll embrace it. Well and good. There's no perfect system anywhere. This is my belief. And I also believe like people learn, and some are fast learners. This is not my area, but ministries don't work based on just the minister. Sometimes the work they do, it's minimal. I am not supporting that. For me, that should change. You being the head, you should do most of the job because you are in charge. You cannot just be a ceremonial boss, enjoy the facilities in the office, the traveling and the like. You're not even sure of how the office operates. That's why I said based on two things. Attitude is number one. Time to work, you know, when you need to do certain needful things, it should be periodical and very professional. And second, I've been crying about it. Let's assess our people every three months. The position I hold, hold me accountable. What have you done? Yeah. Because if I appoint you, there are things you need to deliver. Yeah. Have you done so? Why wait for a year or after five years to make changes? Let's do it every three months, if not six months. Half of the month, let's see what you've achieved. Okay, I was supposed to do six. I achieved three. Now, this other three left. Make sure within, before the next assessment, you deliver. When you do this, people will also be up to their toes knowing that I am being watched and I have a work to do. But if you leave them on their own, like the saying goes, Gambian bit of a bugalu, yomba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's our nature. It is our attitude. And when you're too harsh on them, they said, key dictator. But you don't own the office. You're there to work and serve the people. If you're not doing that for me, you have failed, and there's no need to keep you in that office, whoever it could it be. Goes. This is my belief. And I, and, I, and I think, to be honest, I think the president uh, said this uh, during his eight message. That I was happy when I heard he about it. That. I only said, hope that he know, will practicalize it. He was lost in transition, but hmm. he said this. He He's, even talked about, you know, the directors with V8. V8 when ministers are not driving V8, said, they, they have grounded have all those people. All the V8s from the directors. I think we need to upload that. At what, least. Dudu, how many times we call upload? Because the Fahidi Lenin better message we won't go. Why, President Borolim, what he has seen message was very strong. Yeah, but she Dudu highlighted have, that, and I wish they listened yeah, to what she he said. Talked and about, I, I he talked that. about how. They have taken V8s from managing directors yeah. because they're expensive and mm -hmm. they have packed it. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, he talked about a pool, he talked about, about cash. Also, how um, they are going to be performance based. Mm -hmm. Then you assess it. Appraisals. Yeah. Appraisals. If you don't work, we, I will fire you. Until and we see it. I've never and the social <laughs> activities, <laughs> the game case, and the attack will stop you from going to work. No, they just say we don't talk this I mean, Fatu, but you. But Fatu, you have been in a position for five years. If you can't say these basic things, then we have a problem. That's what I'm saying. But now you're saying it. I mean, we it's giving hope. Let's just expect that. But that is where the problem is. Then we know he's incompetent. If, for example, now you're saying that he's giving us hope for saying that people will be will be assessed based on competence and their performance, then we have a big problem. And I think that is what we have to acknowledge first. You know, by solving a problem, you first have to acknowledge there's a problem. Of course. But in this country, we are not acknowledging that we have a leadership crisis. I have no problem with President Barrow. When he was 
when 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 he was a real estate agent but today i am accounting him and holding him up to, um, to account because he is in the biggest position in this country so i expect him to do these things and he's been paid to do it i mean for me in even me as a leader let's say at kmc i can't do everything like like for example you have mentioned and that is understandable but at least the basic things, your basic responsibilities, we expect you to do those things. Of course. And I, I don't expect us to thank you for doing those things. For example, when people no, say I am a huge thanking people critic. is our culture. You can't eliminate no, that. No, but what we are saying, I am not disagreeing with that. But, for example, I keep saying, even at KMC, when, when for example, I pass the seal and they are like, ah, you are not going to be a clean talibi. That is encouraging, motivating you know, what, what I mean is because the bar is too low. Well, well, I must, uh, me, I don't thank KMC. I don't thank people for doing their job. I don't also thank people for doing their job. It is our Gambia I can appreciate. I can appreciate. I don't thank. We are all used to that anyway. Since we were, we grew up. But that's what I'm saying. Living in such society. We grew up in a situation where we didn't have these things. Yeah. Because they send you to the shop you. as a kid. You should go to the shop and buy kid. And say, things. Yeah, yeah. Where do you come, they tell you thank you. No, no, that's a different dude. Can stand it with Kogo Kasha. Kogo, hello, you can go and go. No, but we've but known that. I'm, I'm so saying it is our culture. You have, you have sent money, your ass are only far too. Then you'll soon do like your cobain and it. You know, you're going to soon ligate. So, Kogo no soon go deaf. Then you go fake. But you man, you encourage Kogo. Everybody needs a tap in the back once in a while. Yeah. But for we are we we should be happy because he has said these things. Then we have a huge. Okay, problem. that's the tap we're uh -huh. giving him with the with the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. The one tap. Finally, is, that's the finally, one. Finally, finally. Uh, Osa, <laughs> I mean, we discussed this. I, I'm not, I'm not we discussed it yesterday. Okay, <laughs> okay. Right. It was all over. He, I had his opinion on it. But so, so um, the removal of Honorable Mamburu Njai. And all the banjo ministers. Do you think it was politically motivated? No. For 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 No, that No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, what I'm trying to say is, okay, for Honorable James, I think everybody knew he's mentioned time with that. Is, is he a Banjulian? Yes, he is. He's been a oh. mayor of Banjo two times. Yeah. yeah. But for him, sorry to yeah. interrupt, yeah. I had that somebody he told me to that he's not coming back. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I was actually going to say. Yeah. Yeah. He talked about that all the time. Okay. And he wants to Honorable Mamurinjai too didn't want to come back. No, no, that's not true. Mm. He didn't want that's to come back. True. Oh, really? <laughs> I, was, I was really surprised that Ma I was really surprised. He didn't want to come back. But anyways, um, for me, no, no, no. For me, like, honestly, I don't think they bought out of our different Tewa Banjo. For me, I think he, he has a good I'm cabinet. Just joking, yes. uh, I think he did well. And as I said, James wanted to go. Honorable Mamburi wanted to go. Hey, 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 wanted to go. Hey, 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 they wanted to go. So they've gone. I was really surprised. I wasn't expecting. I, I thought Mamburi will, will be maintained. Um, that's what I thought. Yeah, I thought too, um, so. I, thought I, I was really surprised when I had um, a new finance minister in the name of CD Keta. Um, all in all, my assessment has been like yesterday, because some of them were big surprises to me. Um, Professor Gomez, I was with him shortly before coming for the analysis. Mm -hmm. This was about 4.30 p.m. We were together on campus. I was leaving to for, come for the show, and he was also leaving. So he was even talking to me. You know, we were chatting and teasing me and all that. So, but then I wasn't expecting it. But later on, I, I came to connect the dots mm -hmm. because um, I was on campus since morning. I went to his office. He was not there. I was told that he was in a meeting. Mm. A whole day meeting with the, with the vice chancellor. <laughs> I don't know what these people were discussing. Yeah. I went for the second time. They said he was still not out. I said I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you know he was brief, obviously. But then I mean his appointment, like him was said and everybody else said. I think you know it's really a step in the right direction. Right. Well, yeah. um, Professor oh, yeah. Gomez is oh, yeah. Um, yeah. you know he's more than qualified oh, yeah. um, for that for that job because looking at the track records from his academic qualification. Mm -hmm professional experience, somebody who taught at Gambia College, had an experience in Gambia College, University. came to UTG, taught, served as, dean, vice served as deputy vice chancellor academics, but even served as acting vice chancellor for a month or so. Um, so I think really the qualification is there. But I, like I said yesterday, I think also, like Dudu said, APRC recommended job. But I am thinking mm -hmm. that Gomez must also have been recommended by the vice, vice president. president yeah. 
because I think he has seen his track records in UTG. Yeah. And to be honest with you, um, everybody has a weakness. Mm -hmm. Gomez has his weaknesses, but he is very hardworking mm -hmm. and committed. That's everybody can important. attest to that. Yeah. Um, you know, that is in UTG, you know, when he was dean, I've closely worked with this man. I've closely worked with this man. Even though sometimes I have my differences with him, we will fight. You know, but when we see, you know, he'll start teasing me. And then he, he's somebody who does not keep anything in him. You will start, you know, having differences with him today. And the next day he sees you as if nothing has happened. And he's very hardworking. He's committed to work. Um, you know, I think he will do a better job. And also... He has first-hand experience of the challenges of the that, you know, there. UTG and other higher education institutions mm -hmm. face in this country. Um, you know, just a few weeks ago, he has always been going to Brikama, moving from Carnifing to Brikama, trying to address the, you know, shortage of classes and also seats and all that. He has always been doing that. And, you know, I think one thing that I would really appeal to Gomez as the new higher education minister is to scrap that idea that the higher education ministry, whoever is behind it, to transform GTTI and MDI into universities when UTG is struggling <laughs> as an institution. Mm -hmm. We have classroom problems. Those are so basic. We have six problems in UTG. Our undergraduate programs need to be strengthened. We cannot, a few courses. We cannot, we mm -hmm. cannot transform GTTI and MDI into universities. You see, we have to be very serious in this country, Fatum. Our politicians always focus on quantity than quality. Yes, I must say this. Barrow and whoever is beside him about this whole idea of transforming GTI and MDA into universities, they're just pushing him so that he will also say, when I came, I built two universities in this country. Yeah, I just built only one university. I built two universities. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea to transform GTI and MDA into universities right now. What we are talking about is even the Gambia College could be transformed into the College of Education under the UTG. Okay, GTTI could be, UTG has a school of engineering. GTTI could be a college of engineering and technical, whatever you call it. Okay, we, UTG is running an engineering program. The Minister of Higher Education said UTG must stop running the program and GTTI have to continue that program. Imagine a university, you ask a university to stop running a degree program and you transfer that to, to GTTI to run. What, are, what courses are MDI, is MDI offering that UTG is not offering? All the courses that they are offering, UTG is offering it. Why do you need to transform that institution into a university when UTG is offering basically the same courses? It doesn't make sense. So that's something that I would want him to really focus on. And I think, I will say this, that's something he's not happy with. Because when the higher education ministry wanted to impose that on UTG, even though they wouldn't come out openly to talk about these things, to resist the idea, but it seems like they were not happy with it. Um, even the staff association at UTG, they're not happy with that idea. And I hope he will just really work on that. We need a big you know, um, change in our higher education system in this country. And I hope Professor Gomez will, will, will do just that. I mean, other technocrats are there. Yes, Dr. Samata is maintained. Um, if you go to the health, health um, fraternity today, people are divided, it seems. Some will tell you that no, Dr. Samates will not be there, you know, corruption scandals here and there, people are dying at the hospitals. I saw what's on Gambia Day, for them they have been writing since yesterday. <laughs> um, but then you talk to some, the others will tell you that, well, he's a good man, I think he's been doing a good job here and there. Um, Lamin Queen Jame, I don't just <laughs> get it. Is it because he's the PRO or spokesperson of the NPP that he has to be Minister of Information? Let's get this right. Even as the spokesperson of NPP, it's Sidin Jai who has overshadowed Queen Jame. You don't hear Queen Jame right. talking anywhere. It's Sidin Jai who has been speaking, just like Duduja and Amul Nyasi. <laughs> At some point, people are, is Duduja the spokesperson? I never knew Amul was the <laughs> spokesperson. Amul was the spokesperson, or is the spokesperson? So I don't know why, what Queen Jame, what value is he going to add? You see, we, we, I know the cabinet composition is like technocrats and politicians. Even though it's, um, it's, it's surprising and disappointing that the coalition partners, the last man standing, I would say, is Hamad Ba. All the other coalition partners <laughs> are not there. NCP is gone. PPP is gone. I don't know their fate anyway. Well, their party leader, oh, ah, gone. Oh, Ex-party leader is in Nigeria enjoying his time as ambassador. But you, you look at the, some of the politicians that are in it. You, where the President Barrow has given, really given them positions that they really deserve. I think there could be other people in the NPP or in the grand coalition, that could do the job. Definitely. Not necessarily compensating, I mean, I mean Queen Jame because he's the spokesperson of, 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 um, of NPP, so he has to be Minister of Information. That's a very delicate information, uh, ministry in this country. Oh, yeah. Agriculture, that's another sensitive area. 
we've been talking about a country that has invested so, so much, much in agriculture. Oh, yeah. From the Jawara era to the Jami era to now. And if you go to the Minister of Agriculture, it's had, it has one of the, the, in fact, we can say the most qualified in terms of academic qualification. Yeah. Personnel in this country. But what has changed in that ministry? And you're bringing somebody who is typically a politician, Demba Sabali, to head that ministry. That's something I have problem with, to be honest. I mean, you look at other ministries. Um, finance, I don't know whether CD has a very good background in finance and economics. Yes, yeah. I, I, does, I really, I he has, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I said I don't know much about him. For local government and lands, I think um, regional government, obviously, um, I've interacted with ABBA. Um, he's level headed and he's also a very sober person. He was one time National Assembly member for Fonya Kansala from 2007 to 2012. And also, he was the Deputy Executive Secretary at the Senegal Gambian Permanent Secretariat in Banjul. Yeah. But he was, I think he also served at the Gambian Embassy in Havana, Cuba, yeah, as yeah. a senior officer, and was also at one point in charge of the PEDEC project yeah, on the, the Jamaica. Yeah, time. I've also interacted with him during a research project. Um, you know, he's level headed, to be honest. Very hard. And because of too. his experience as governor of Central River region, I think this must have been the reason why. Baro just um, appointed him as Gov uh, Minister of Land. I think it's a good move to remove Musa Drame from that ministry. Fantastic move. Um, it's <laughs> really a good move. From KMZ. Whether, whether, <laughs> whether, it's, uh, whether it's, it's good that he is taken in that ministry of fisheries, nah. well, that's another sc um, scandalous ministry. I don't agree you know, with you, you yeah, know, but, but know. because, I mean, maybe Baro, in fact, thinks that, look, Musa cannot do his job. I mean, there has been a lot of scandals in this country about land issues, land problems here and there. I think to calm the situation, let me just move Musa to fisheries. No, but, um, but then, but Eza, I think land and, uh, and our oceans have been KMC, the biggest, yeah, most delicate. No, 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 no. They'll be happy no, that he's gone. I'm very happy that he's gone. No, yes, I am very happy. <laughs> yes. um, since yesterday, I've been praising God, you know. But then the second point is that I think, um, personally, I would have removed him from the cabinet in totality. Yeah, I, you would have. Yeah, I, I understand you would have. I, I yes. Why you <laughs> yeah. No, no, but, but, but even go, going further, um, <laughs> not even political. When you look at it, I think land and our oceans have been the biggest issues we have faced as a country in the past five years. And as land minister, because we don't have land, land, a land commission, we have had land issues, especially in Combo. We have faced so much issues, and Musa Drame has not been able to address any of them. And in fact, he has caused more issues than even solved them. You are going into another very delicate territory for Combo, and you have put Musa Drami as Minister of, 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 of Fisheries and Water Resources. Even though it's not just about the oceans, it's also about the River Gambia, and, you know, and, and also um, our other water bodies and you know, water quality and other things. One, he has no scientific experience, which I can understand, as you guys said. It's a political appointment. <laughs> Secondly, this is a very scandalous individual who has, who has had so many scandals. Seriously? No. And today, you, you, you are putting him in, at, at a position. No. You are putting him at a, at a position. I feel you have to withdraw that. No, this is not the parliament. Um, you, 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 are putting him, you are putting him at a position <laughs> where people have been fighting against um, um, intrusion in our waters. I would say that put someone there who would be able to, 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 to solve issues, who is a better manager. Because you are giving us more issues to fight against ourselves. You look at Gunjur, you look at Sanyang, you look at all of these um, coastal villages, we have the same issue. Will Musa be able to mediate, um, um, mediate these issues? No. No, he might. Don't, don't just close So, the no, for me, I'm saying I don't believe he will be able to do it. Yeah, based, yeah. based on his, his track record and the number of scandals, that has happened under his ministry. So I think this is something that if I even was able to advise Baro, I'd choose someone else to be there. I think we have a lot of technocrats who, because these are positions you need technocrats in. These are positions you need. Nobody minds if they're a member of, of his party. But have someone there who will be able to solve the issues. And I think this is a delicate um, a ministry, and Musa Drame should not be anywhere close to resources of this country. Be it the land, <laughs> be it water. <laughs> For me, that is too hard. That's too hard, bro. No, but, 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 but. Like I said earlier, people learn, and some learn very fast. And like he's not alone. Maybe the composition of the ministry, he could gel and, you know. But the point I'm trying would to put across, do he differently. Will, I mean, people learn from the past. Minister of Fisheries was the only minister that so got burned down in, in the history of this country. But not under Musa. But, but what I'm saying, the ministry itself is facing issues already. Yeah. 
that you are bringing that, in no no but you know the point I is, agree I no, agree no, the, the issues is, at the ministry no the point is huh? mm. this is a very um, personal and emotional position for me because I come from Congo I know the suffering that our people are going through and I know what we need to solve these issues I don't believe he is the one to solve it and nothing will change that position for me because I know the capabilities. I've worked with this ministry in the min in the line ministry he was in. I right. know the troubles that we have gone what, through. What I'm saying is he's yeah. already appointed. Let's yeah, support him. Let's no, help that, him. To... Being appointed doesn't mean that we, we, we have to, you know, uh, uh, accept um, uh, and not put across our points. No. Being, being, being appointed no, the points is, are understood. No, what I'm saying, being appointed, I, it doesn't mean I have to support everyone who is in... Cabinet. In cabinet, because I don't believe they can do it. Yeah. And the point that we are we, we we are always failing to understand is that not supporting your government doesn't mean that you are you are not a patriotic citizen. Yeah. But you want better for your country, and you don't believe those people can do it. Yeah. And for me, that is my point. This is why I didn't raise issues with Prof Gomez's appointment. Yeah. This is why I didn't raise issues with um, Badaradu's appointment. This is why I didn't raise issues with uh, um, 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 the Secretary General's appointment, because I know they can deliver. Yeah, they have a proven track record. Equally, I've seen people who are criticizing them. Yes, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's like, based on opinion. They don't know them. Yeah, but, yeah. That's, but, that's but this is an individual I know. This is an individual that I've worked with. Can and this is an individual I'm saying cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Can, cannot. Cannot. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. So finally, <laughs> was anyone surprised that uh, Dr. Toure is gone? No. I, I'm surprised anyway. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you were surprised. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised anyway. Maybe because I had limited information. No, I, I was not a good observer anyway. Speaking maybe. about limited information, we need to definitely raise this. Every document that comes into government would be leaked at some point. What but this that? one is one document. Even Barrow did not leak this one. Day. I said it. I Barrow said leaked it. everything it that you discussed with him. This one document. I said That's it. That has it was protected. Been leaked. Guarded jealously. I think this is how hey. moving forward mm. our our document should be held. And then is that not understand. a show of sign that yes. Barrow really means business? Yes. But yes. Nikki, is that? Mm. I <laughs> don't know what about secrecy and all of that. But exactly. I definitely have always had an issue people about that people that. leaking information. Oh, it's just, it's just, it's it's just not right. Ugly. Yes. And I was have very, very happy in this room. I have to mention this. Everybody, everybody who had access to the document and sat on it, well done. Well done. Yeah. Well, if I only it's part of the new techniques. Yeah. The president is the coming. President is there. He's I going to surprise Kim. Me? Surprise yes. <laughs> if Musa Drame does no, well, I'm not talking about Musa Drame. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking yeah. about the president. If Barrow does well, yeah. the point is, we are not against President Barrow. I understand. We want Just better for our country. Like, mm -hmm. Every opposition party, like for example, you used to say when you were opposition in 2017. I'm still opposition. <laughs> well, my, you know, uh, <laughs> you are part of the grand coalition. Yeah, I'm still for me, the for, me, for me, it's about <laughs> the because the suffering in the this sad. country cannot continue. Yeah. The hardship in this country cannot continue when certain individuals are enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. We want change, regardless of whoever is in government. We want better for our people. Well, I, I agree what not we to cut you short. Yeah. I've been advocating for that, and I still do. Yeah. Do you know there are people I go on media platforms, they get to me and say, I want to advise you to stop going to the media. I said, why? What have I done wrong? They said, you are, you are you know, at government's tail. You know, and Barrow really has high hopes in you. He could appoint you, but going to the media could spoil that chance. I said, come on. It's not about having a position or not. Since yesterday, up till today, I'm receiving a lot of calls. People are calling me <laughs> and telling me, you know, we expected that you'll be me. I said, well, me, I never expected that, to be quite honest. Living. I never have those hopes. And <laughs> Digital economy. Digital I economy, am, huh? I am someone that's, who's, that's who's that's very funny. focused about my country. Trade. Trade. You know. Trade is still empty. No, but and, do and mean advocating for putting right people. So do leave these positions to and, and to allow me to... No, but, but, but what I'm saying is, why is everybody forgetting back so like... <laughs> no, Baxter doesn't want you cabinet. Know, you know, maybe local government would have been better because he was. Baxter doesn't want cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Baxter knows when he, what he wants and he will get it. That's Baxter for That's you. Baxter. If he wants your shoe, Baxter will have your shoe. Yeah. You can take <laughs> that to the bar. People who know Baxter. What I am saying here is, for me, it's not about the position. You know what made me very happy about the statement or the speech the president gave on it. Mm -hmm. Most of this issue. I and many others have been talking about, about it. it yeah. It's like he's a keen listener. And not anything he is. When you sit with the president, you know he's a keen listener. 
He has a very soft heart. <coughs> I have said it that me, if I am president, I will not be like him. We create it differently. Yeah. We all, all have our attitudes. But the president, with honesty, mm -hmm. he is somebody who doesn't want to kill a fly. What I observe, I had that one on one with him on several occasions. He's the type, even you come, want to complain about somebody, he will tame you and calm that down. I met a journalist in this country who told me, I went to State House, and the president called me and gave me an advice that, Mr. X, there are people who come here to me complaining about you that I have to take action. He said, he told him, but be careful. People are close to you, they'll smile at you, but they don't like you. He said that hit him hard, that what he thought about the president was definitely different. Sometimes if you don't get close to people, you don't get to know them. I am telling you, the first day I sat with him, I was surprised. People look at him, like they said, Kinyoru, ki Ewood, Kili. But when you sit with him, he's a different personality. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. And in all the sittings I have with the president, to be honest, he always makes me laugh. He's somebody who's very jovial. jovial. He makes me laugh. For me, I believe that is like nature. And all the times I sat with him, I learned one thing from him. I'll give one example. Mm -hmm. There was this, it, I was not alone with him. Like people went to state house, imams and others. I was among those who went. He said, let me say it in Wolof. So I'm a gun. Gabuga yar sa halay. Sa domi. Munya du soti. Munya halay dan ko yar bala gandi yo. And when he said that, I said, he's making sense. He said, being a president does not change who you are. It only shows who you were. It reveals who you are. I learned this from him. This is one example that any time I sit with him with this course, I hear a few words that I never had before. And for me, it's a lesson. It's a lesson. Maybe for other people, they heard about it or they've known about it. But for me, I always learn from him. What I am saying, this cabinet, be it cabinet or whatever positions, let's embrace each other as campaigns. Let's be supportive. Yeah. It does not take away our criticism. We, we all going to do. Yeah. This country belongs to all of us. If people are given the responsibilities, they will be held accountable. Oh. Nobody can, can, no, can take that away. And I believe those in leadership too, they are accepting that. Yes. But at least let's make comparison. He's not the type who's going after people for any reason. But he's very forgiving. He's very forgiving. I'll definitely say that. He's very forgiving. <laughs> I'm I'm going to say that. Uh, presidential election National Assembly, them now with <laughs> mayor uh, council of Bobo, it's like next year, right? Mm -hmm. So we can we have time, mm -hmm. but for now we have a new cabinet. So I think we should um, expectations are very high, mm -hmm. and this is from basically across the board. There's divided opinions, of course. Some are not very happy with some that have been maintained, but it looks like at least most of the ones that have brought in, yeah. people are quite happy with the selection. So we expect them to deliver. Exactly. And again, we expect their uh, ministries mm. and the people that they're working with to support them. Mm -hmm. And also the box, like, put to support them. So, and everything just stops at the president. And again, we're appealing to him or telling, asking him to, again, support these ministries, business policies, that would be good for country or things would be implemented to the, to the end. Because Gambia, well, we've seen that we'll, we'll have a 400-page document. We'll stop at page two for five <laughs> years anyways. And they'll keep telling yeah. you about the documents they have. And you would never see any meaningful, um, like what's it called, not policies, but action being taken about these policies that they have written, some of them gardening dust. So we want to see, this is what we were expecting five years ago. We've passed five years ago. Now we're coming into another five years. <coughs> so we don't want another five years to come and we start going back and say, this is what we're expecting. So <coughs> the president has said it in his ministry, in his Eid message. So we're all sitting and watching and expecting to see these results and expecting to see a better developed Gambia that us, the young people, have been yearning for, us, the young people, because we're taking over at some point. So we would definitely want to see these things that will pave way for us. So, and I would say good luck to everybody who's been appointed. And we're watching. And also and thank the people thing. that have served already. Yeah. Yeah. That have been yeah. removed. Yeah. 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 At least they have done. You know, I said one thing. <laughs> and, and to my uncles and my binkies, I would say thank you very much for your service. <laughs> and you guys have done well.
still a UNBM. The yeah, bus driver has yeah, decided. Yeah, take over. And, <laughs> and to the president, I'm appealing. I need to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with us, so, with you, because president, we've been requesting for interviews, and then we still have it. So it's either. For now, can you Wow. So, so you know what the fact is. I'm asking for a one one. I'm but anyways, um, yeah. So that's all I'm saying. Good luck to everyone. <laughs> Two things. Mm -hmm. Five years, six years has been a waste mm -hmm. when it comes to the reforms. Um, I am saying that President Barrow should get to work, ready that these five years coming should be to make sure that those reforms are implemented. We need a new constitution before 2026 presidential election. We need a new electoral law in this country. We need a serious security sector reform. We need a serious civil service reform. We need to fight corruption in this country. It's the cancer to our development. That is why my eat prayer has been when people were praying before next Ramadan, may God forgive our sins. I said, that's not my prayer. My prayer is before next Ramadan, together we are able to defeat corruption in this country. All corrupt public officials are exposed and dealt with according to law. I mean, that we are able to deal, <laughs> fight poverty and inequality in this country. That our health care system is fit for purpose, is not synonymous with death sentence. That our roads are safe to drive on. That all opportunities that are parading as good sons of the land are exposed. I mean, that this country, we are able to live a dignified life that can be inherited by generations to come. This has been my prayer. And I hope and pray that the president, together with the new cabinet, will really work on that. But one thing that I would like to assure him is that let him not think that he's threatening words can silence anybody. I think he needs to be prepared for another tough five years. This is democracy. It can be messy and complicated. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you cannot stand the heat, then you have to leave the kitchen, especially if you're a bad cook because you'll mess up everything. So people will not be silenced. Yes, we will appreciate where he has gone right, and we will definitely um, applaud him for that. But wherever he has gone wrong, especially when it comes to the mismanagement of public funds, the looting of our resources by a cabal of kleptocrats, when it comes to abuse of office, we will talk about these things, because this is our country. This country does not belong to President Barrow. It does not belong to Loya Dabo, it does not belong to Tom Bonjada, it does not belong to SNJ. It belongs to all Gambians. Therefore, nobody could determine who should talk and who should not talk. Where he has gone right, we will definitely appreciate it, like I said. But where he has gone wrong, we will also talk about it. No threatening words can silence anybody. This is democracy. We fought for this freedom, and we will defend it at all costs and time. Um, I'd just like to say a big con uh, con congratulations to all. Um, cabinet ministers and also thanking all of the ministers that have been relieved of their duties and they serve their country to the best of their ability I believe. I um, also like to thank Gambian voters. I never had the opportunity to thank them but I'd also like to thank voters for voting for our members of parliament because um, I, I believe that was the first step of making sure that there's accountability in the country and that the process of governance would go you know better off. And going further, um, I also just like to reiterate on some of the things that as I said. Um, in 2016, we had points that we wanted to work on. For the first five years, we haven't been able to accomplish any of them. Hopefully, we will be able to accomplish them. Um, going further also, we hope reforms that we want will be able to take place and that we would see a new constitution. Because I do believe that for the process of governance to go the way we want it to go, we need to have new laws and laws that are, you know, um, fit for purpose. I'm um, going further. I'd also like to urge the president that criticism or people that criticize him are not his enemies, but rather they want be better and best for their country, and that he should see us all as mm -hmm. as he is our main protector, and that we are all under his service. And we hope that he will be able to be a unifying factor and unite our country as we are very polarized today. Um, considering what what has happened in the past, we hope that he will be able to move forward. And considering that he has a new team, that they will be able to deliver the country. But like I said earlier, everything depends on his, uh, um, his ability to move the ship forward. And we hope he will be able to do it. Um, on that note, um, the UDP is ready to work with everyone. And the UDP is ready to work with even you know, um, um, this current government. But we want it to be based on truth 
and progress because that is what we have always believed that the country needs um, 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 unity. In fact, in 2021, our, our coalition or campaign message was a united Gambia under a UDP government. Regardless of us not being in, in, in government, we believe that we still need a united Gambia. And we are ready to work with everyone. We are ready to work with all Gambians to make sure that our country moves forward. Gambians can count on our 16 members of parliament, that they will be there for the interests of the country, and they're open to everyone, that they will be able to work and make sure that they bring everybody on board. You have 15 you, or 16? You have 15 kids. You have 16? You are increasing kids. Oh, but that's independent. Okay. Kanda is Babala Barista. Ngago Babala Barista. It is independent. You have 15. You have 16? No, 15. Okay, on paper we have 15. No, legally they have 15. You will have Busumbala. Busumbala. Voted for independent candidate. No problem. No, I'm not going to do that. This is a good panel and I really, really, I think I've not enjoyed any show better. Than this. It was a good conversation. Uh, apart from Oli and Esther coming late, everything else is good. <laughs> Thank you very much, and see you next week. Good night to you all. Bye bye. Thank you, Charles. I'm stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. With an expansion in travel services, customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs provided by professional experienced and ever smiling staff GIA's Hajj package and services by far the best in the country give the customers the opportunity for a memorable Hajj experience for a more efficient cargo services GIA means business as it launches its new multi-million dollar ultra modern cargo complex to revitalize and stimulate air transport GIA, the pride of the Gambia. Every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Mm -hmm.